forward to a big day of footy and another big weekend here at Side Pop Hard. We're going to call the elimination finals, so should be a great yeah, yeah, weekend. Yeah, you can pop up there and we'll get beautiful and uh, giving our special comments and our team sheets hot off the press, Matthew. <laughs> yeah, really it's Siobhan so. Rowe. How are you, Siobhan? Good, thanks, Cooksey. Looking forward to today. Beautiful conditions and should be a cracking game of footy. Stakes go up in finals, especially when there's an elimination final, so looking for a great showing between these two sides. Should be fantastic. And down on the ground for the first match is Rick Morris. How are you, Rick? Rick is uh, very good by the sounds of things. Can you hear us, Rick? Yeah, I've got you now, Cooksey. Um, just teeing up one of our <laughs> interviews at half time. That's good, yeah. Paul Hamilton's coming up at half time. Yeah, with um, Paul Hamilton there. All right. Give us the uh, ground conditions and the weather conditions out there. Well, I tell you, um, the, there's. The sun's just gone uh, behind a cloud there, but it's perfect footy weather. It really is. Uh, I think we got around the 16 degree mark. Uh, the ground is as good as I can remember Princess Park being, or Icon Park as it is now. Um, they've done a lot of work to the surface and it's, uh, it's AFL standard, Crooksy. I, I would think in a couple of years time they'll be playing games here if the AFL's uh, smart enough. Any breeze? Uh, not not much of a breeze at all. If anything, it's just coming across the ground. It is so slight, there's there's not much to really report on. Doesn't seem to be any favouring any any uh, end of the ground. Uh, I think we're just in for a good footy day. The the good sides will shine today. All right, Danny Nong versus the GWV Rebels. Players that we need to be looking out for, Siobhan. The AFL Draft Central Player Watch today focuses on GWV Rebels player Maddie Lloyd. Uh, he's the brother of Sydney Swans wingman slash defender Jake Lloyd. Um, he has had a consistently impressive season for the Rebels, working hard off the wing, so similar to his brother, and occasionally through the midfield. Last week against the Northern Knights, he had 20 disposals, two rebounds, three inside 50s and two goals, and he used the ball really well. And for the Dandenong Stingrays midfielder, Sam Fletcher, wearing the number one today. He was named on the interchange bench in the TAC Cup Team of the Year and he's also had a very consistent season through the midfield, constantly racking up disposals, putting his body on the line for the team. And he's also another really good ball user and always has a really big crack in that midfield. So look for him to have a good game today for the Stingrays. Excellent. Two players that we will keep an eye on. We are going to take our first break and we'll be back on the other side of this with elimination final one between the Dandenong Stingrays and the GWV Rebels. Tech Cup Radio will be streaming live through the TAC Cup website. Cowboys Cash and Carry have the largest range of clothing bargains in the northern suburbs for the whole family. School wear and work wear has just arrived and is half the price you'd expect to pay at major stores. A family run business, Cowboys Cash and Carry has new stock daily and 15,000 square feet of bargains. Come and see what the northern suburbs are raving about. Mention this ad and get 10% off their already cheap prices. Cowboys Cash and Carry, 169 Settlement Road, Thomastown, open seven days. Technica is an Australian company that's been importing Italian-made and European-designed cooking appliances and white goods for almost 20 years. Technica appliances are a fusion of cutting-edge technology and contemporary design, providing a high level of style and sophistication to any kitchen. This is why so many leading architects, developers, interior designers and builders use Technica appliances, because like their customers, they want the very latest in innovation and quality. Technica, proud sponsor of the Northern Knights and TAC Cup Radio. Executive Maintenance has grown to be a preferred facility maintenance provider by maintaining excellence for over 25 years. A registered domestic and commercial building practitioner, Executive Maintenance provides facility maintenance for government, corporate, property and retail sectors. Whether it's a handyman for your corporate space or a fully qualified crew to manage your project, Executive Maintenance has the knowledge and expertise to provide a personal yet professional service. If you need assistance with your building maintenance needs, email admin at executivemaintenance.com.au. Executive Maintenance, a proud sponsor of TAC Cup Radio. Another year of TAC Cup football and your number one AFL draft site is back and bigger than ever. AdZ Media, powering AFL Draft Central, continues to revolutionise the way AFL draft content is reported. 
In 2018, the team has increased to more than 40 writers who will provide powerful and cutting-edge stories nationwide. With draft news, features and women's football coverage, AFL Draft Central is your one-stop shop for AFL Draft content. Head to afldraftcentral.com.au or stay up to date with us on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. Check out at AFL Draft Central. Essendon captain Heppel settles and he's done it. He's slotted through the match-winning goal. Roughhead flies high across the pack and takes a classic mark. Pendlebury's leading from the front, clocking up the possessions today, and young gun pup Cal Porter is looking good in his debut match. Gippsland Power generates footy legends, and NG is the power behind Gippsland Power. NG Hazelwood are proud to be helping tomorrow's future stars as major sponsor of Gippsland Power. Gippsland Power, the backyard playground of tomorrow's future stars. Go Power! Nixon Finance has been running in the Plenty Valley area of Greensboro for over 20 years. As your financial consultants and brokers, they specialise in all your equipment and vehicle finance needs. Home loans, business loans, commercial property loans. They deal with all the banks and get the right loan that suits your needs. Call Phil Smith during business hours on 94352600 or email nixonfinance at bigpond.com. On TACCup.com.au, this is TAC Cup Radio. Welcome back to Icon Park for Elimination Final 1. The Dandenong Stingrays, with the week's break, uh, taking on the GWV Rebels, which uh, had a massive win up at Mars Stadium last Saturday against the Northern Knights, won it by about uh, 10 odd goals, 11 goals I think in the end. Terrible. <laughs> As uh, the Rebels make their way onto the ground. Was it the uh, critical assessment of it there, Crooksy? The it was horrible with a capital H. <laughs> it was a massacre. It was a shocker. The Danny Nong Stingrays boys seemed really up and about as soon as they walked on the ground. Really excited, I think, to get the game going. And they obviously had the rest last week and they're looking nice and fresh running out onto the field today. Plenty of chatter down there on the ground, Rick. Yeah, yeah, especially from the uh, GWV boys. Um, now, we did have a fitness test for Sam Sturt during the week uh, for his uh, calf, some soreness on his calf. Uh, caused with another injury, but that's uh, come up okay. So Sam Sturt definitely will play. And he's been a bit of a late comer, Rick. He's uh, found himself an invite to the combine. Yeah, from the Mornington Peninsula League. Uh, came into this squad very, very late in the season. And every time we've seen him, he's been fantastic around the forward line. A real opportunist and uh, just creates well and, and stylish player. Has been good. Players that you're looking forward to see today, Rick? Um, I've been watching um, uh, Hayden Young of late, and he seems to be coming on each game that we see him. Uh, so he's uh, going to be one to watch in the future, uh, Hayden Young, number two for the Dandenong Stingrays. Um, now, a, a boy we gave uh, a best player on the ground a couple of weeks ago, Matthew Cottrell. Stands out with the red hair, very classy both sides of the body, so doesn't get a lot of talk. We're, we're the only ones talking him up at the moment. Okay. I'll be watching him very closely for They're Danny Nong today. Like. They're the ones we like, Rick. The ones no one else are talking about. We're just trying to find a few little... Uh, yep. Nuggets of gold. Yeah, diamonds in the rough. That's right. I'll be also watching Patrick Glanford, uh, who we've got ties with from... Uh, a long time ago, I know, played with his dad, Shane. Um, so Pat, Patrick um, is really developing into a good uh, ruckman. Um, whether they play him all game today will be one thing to watch, but uh, I think he's an old-fashioned follower. Yes, yeah, yes, that's good. That's a, yeah, well, uh, let's ask the younger generation, do you know what a follower is, uh, Siobhan? Have I you heard think, the term? I think a follower is one of the players in the midfield that receives the ruck tap down from the ruckman, or is that just a midfielder? Nah, more, more the ruckman can be the follower. Oh. So the, ruck, the ruckman in the old days would just sort of um, do a bit of what Max Gorn did last night and play the ruck and go, then sit back on the defence, where a follower followed the ball like a utility, like a ruck rover, but ruck the ball. A bit like us. a Dean Cox uh, Probably in yeah. the modern era. And speaking of followers, uh, Bailey Williams was named as 
one of them in the TAC Cup Team of the Year last Sunday. Uh, an incredible talent. Oh, yeah. To the Dandenong Sting Race. A real jumping jack. Your selection, Rick? Uh, I've gone for Dandenong. I think they'll be too good. They're really starting to step it up. Um, went a bit quiet a couple of weeks ago, but I, I think they're just putting their game together. Uh, they're missing one big man in Bailey Smith, who's played a bit in the ruck of late, uh, but they've brought in uh, Cumming to play that role today. So it um, be interesting to see how they, they measure up. And um, we've also got um, Bailey Williams to play in the ruck as well, haven't they? Uh, they have too. Your, sh your selection, uh, Siobhan? I think the Danny Nong Stingrays will get the job done today. Uh, the skipper, Campbell Husswaite, and the player I mentioned before, Sam Fletcher, to have big games, but I think Danny Nong will get the job done. Matthew? Yeah, I think Dandenong, uh, nice little warm-up for a couple of weeks' time. I think they're going to win, and I'm going to put it somewhere around the 10-goal vicinity. Ooh. I'm going for Dandenong, 44 points. As... The, uh, you couldn't get a more picturesque scene if you love your footy. Beautiful day. Umpire holds the ball aloft. Elimination final one. Danny Nong and the Rebels take it away, Matthew. So we're underway and the Rebels will get first use of the footy. The handball came the way of Glanford. It was intercepted and the Stingrays go high towards the centre wing on the broadcast side. Husswait coming through, got the handball away, it was intercepted, and the Rebels hurry kick towards half Ooh. forward, ball off hand, Stingrays with numbers, they work it to the centre wing, down along the boundary line, the kick well wide there coming from McDonald, and it will go the way of the GWV Rebels. Mickle Drew goes inboard, cut off by Sam Fletcher for the Dandenong Stingrays. Between centre wing and half back, broadcast side, High ball, Williams came late, but the man in front took the mark for them, and there's Sam Sturt, a player that's come on in recent weeks for them, underwent a fitness test earlier today, and his kick inside attacking 50 went down the throat of Riley Bowman. Matt, that was perfectly weighted, that kick. He kept it low and just had enough carry to clear the defender. Perfectly weighted kick, very skillful play. Nice build-up from the Danny Nong Stingrays early allowing Riley Bowman to have his first shot on goal. Will come in slightly worse than a 45 degree angle. Hardly any breeze to speak Ooh. of today and he's kicked it straight into the man on the mark. Comes off hands, did it go over the boundary line or it hit the padding of the behind post. So we'll throw it in, forward pocket, broadcast side for the Dandenong Stingrays. A minute and a half in to the opening term on the Technica time clock. No score either side on the NG scoreboard. So it's thrown back into play. Rebels again get first use from the ruck contest. The handball was intercepted. Working overtime was right. He was being held. And so the Rebels will get a free kick. Back pocket out of sight. Crooksy. That's a lovely palm by Glanford too, Rick. I don't know if you saw that. Yeah, he's already got a couple of uh, beautiful palm outs. Yeah, he's not on the right angle for a man kicking out in the last line of defence. <laughs> What's your favourite rule, that one? Just come around. What dribble? Honestly, Jaden Wright kicks out out of half back flank, city side of the ground, comes off hands of the pack. Rebels force the ball over the boundary line out of bounds on the full under pressure with the Dandenong Stingrays. GWV Rebels player Charlie Wilson, who was named on the interchange bench in the TSC Cup team of the year, starting in the midfield today. Usually plays up forward. Said he loves a goal. He kicked 35 for the uh, home and away season. And this is Sturt who's marked just inside 50. Made a good start, Sam Sturt. The left footer. Oh, look, poor checking. Poor checking, and the mark has been taken by Jai Taylor. He is on a 45-degree angle. He will kick from 33 and a half metres out, kicking to the Robert Heatley stand-in, if there was a Robert Heatley stand there. Matthew, oh. there was in days gone by. I was going to say, what's that? What's that? It was a it was a place to be avoided, Matthew. A play, a no go zone for people like you and I. As 
Joy Taylor comes in, kicks, and cross the face through for a behind on the NG scoreboard. And that is the first score of the day. They're the one solitary behind. GWV yet to score, and to bring the ball back in is Harris Jennings. He goes in short. They work the ball around the outer side of the ground. Matty Lloyd. Lloyd goes in. Oh. That had danger written all over it. Intercept mark. And this has been taken by Toby Bedford. A little bit of complacency there from the Rebels. This player's just gone down just off the mark. Not, not, not a lot of urgency coming out of defence. Costly As error from Matty Lloyd resulting in a shot on goal. Toby Bedford. He'll kick from 42 metres out. Kicks. And again, it fades to the right. No Both those line. kicks faded right. And that is two behinds, two points for the Stingrays. The Rebels yet to score. Bring it into the back pocket. The mark is taken by CAC Cup Radio's very own Jacob Lohman. His kick, again a little cute, opened an opportunity for Williams to come through and see it over the boundary line and out of play. The, there's just no confidence with the kicking at the moment coming out of defensive 50 for the Rebels. You've got to play bold, aggressive footy against the Dandenong Stingrays. You can't let them have a window of opportunity because they will make you pay. It's what got them over the line last week against the Northern Knights. And when I say over the line, over the line comfortably. Glanford, handball to Lloyd. Tried to put it into a bit of space, was cut off. They get it across to Fletcher, handball over the top. A oh, hot series of handballs ended up in McDonald's hands who lets loose and puts it through for the first here at Icon Park. Stingrays move to 1-2-8 on the NG scoreboard. Rebels yet to score. We are ticking towards six minutes in the opening term on the Technica time clock. McDonnell running in a straight line there, just read that play beautifully and the handball was executed uh, out in front so he could run on and kick it in a straight line. Beautiful execution. Good start for the Stingrays. Game predominantly played in their forward line, which is always very dangerous against a side like Dandenong. Mikel Drew and Cumming in the ruck. Ball comes out to Rick's man in Hayden Young. Spits the handball out, held up in a tackle by Carlin, and the umpire will come in and ball this up. Over in front of the Hawthorne stand. Up she goes, a bit of holding on to the jumper. Young on the left boot, hooks it around close to the boundary. Or well, they keep it in. Kick to the square, hits the behind post on the full. It'll be out of bounds on the full. Free kick to go to the Rebels. That was Matty Cottrell with that kick there. Player that, as Rick mentioned at the top of the broadcast, has caught our eye in recent, recent weeks. <coughs> Braden Hellier hugs the boundary. Touched over the line. And they will bring the ball back in. We are 60 metres around from the Stingers goal. They're kicking to the Royal Parade end in the first quarter. Not a big crowd here to see this match. We, uh, we trust there's plenty of people in the country up in the uh, greater western Victorian area logging onto the TAC Cup website to catch all the action. And it's a fair trip in from Dandenong too. It is, yes. Wrong side of town. Down in the Mornington Peninsula where a lot of the players come from. Quick hacking kick out. Dandenong just forced the ball forward. Beautiful tackle there by Jai Taylor and no reward. The ball will be thrown up 30 metres out from the Stingrays goal. Just an observation, the Stingrays have got Sam Sturt playing as that Tom Lynch role from Adelaide, that link-up player, but he can also kick goals himself, as he's certainly shown. Trying to work their way, Sturt applies the tackle. Too high, says the umpire. And the free kick will go to Lockie Dawson. Deep in the heart of 
defensive 50. Dawson goes a little short, dinky out wide. Finds his teammate and Jaden Wright. Slow movement of the footy. Again, he just goes down the line. Comes out the back. All there are are stingrays. They work through heavy traffic. Eventually, they're going to cough it up. Yes, they do. Rebels. Holding the oh. ball, says the umpire. <laughs> I'll leave you with that, Matthew. <laughs> well, I just try and work that one out. Thank you, Crooksy. <laughs> Good look away handball from you as the ball goes inside attacking 50. Just floats it over the back of the contest. There's another opportunity here. Huss wait with the ball in his hand. Retreats backwards with the handball to foot. Who puts it on its way again. Drifts across the face of goal. Fell short. They keep it in momentarily. The boundary umpire right on the spot said they took it over the line and out of play. So we'll throw it in. Forward pocket. For the Dandenong Stingrays. Rebels yet to have an entry inside attacking 50 as we tick towards 10 minutes on the Technica time clock. Right court, dinky kick away. Lohman following it up, sold the candy, fell over. Might have got a shove in the back and the umpire says yes. So Lohman at centre half back for the GWV Rebels. <coughs> And oh. again, the kick is ordinary. Plumridge runs to 45 metres for the Stingrays. He's put it wide, one bounce, and over the boundary line and out of play. Doesn't seem to be a hell of a lot of urgency from either side. Uh, are you picking that up at ground level, Rick? Yeah, they're still finding their feet, but um, they seem to do a lot of their attacking that um, the old Richard Pratt stand side at the moment. The ball's just going across to the gymnasium. A little bit of a breeze has picked up towards us. Here's a snap at goal. Comes off hands. Quick work by Bedford. But the Rebels got in there. Bringing the, the ball back in. Certainly done well, but Danny Nong had plenty of opportunities to make them pay on the scoreboard. Lloyd, two by to the cherry. Takes the mark on half back. Kicks to centre wing, looking for Big McKeldrew. Bowman comes over the top with a thumping fist. Out of bounds, centre wing, northern side of Icon Park. Every player currently on this half of the ground. Hello, modern day footy. No one can get. Bowman eventually gets the tap down. Husswaite. Loses it, gets it to Fletcher, to Sturt. Sturt on the left boot, kick smothered by Schnering. Husswaite. And it is... Stacks on the mill. Sam Fletcher very busy early for the Stingrays. Husswaite eventually gives the ball back to the umpire. Bowman, lovely tap, taken by Schnering, back to McKeldrew, his kick smothered. They're over the top of it. Eventually they spit it out, handball. Now Bain, go inside 50, looking for Williams, he comes over the top, can't take the mark, Fletcher slips at an inopportune time. Now Williams, kicks it off the carpet. We're stuck just on side on 50. Trapped under a heap of players. The umpire looks he's going to ping, and he does. Over the top, Bedford, you made no realistic uh, opportunity. Dawson goes out wide. Now, long kick. This is right, goes to centre wing. Hasn't been too many uh, forays up forward, and Danny Nong repel again. They kick in short. Bain, two kicks from goal. Indecisive, goes in short. Got a teammate out wide. Now they look for Williams. Gets it on the half volley. Turns around, kicks. It's across the face, and bounce will 
see it over the boundary line and out of bounds. Doesn't have the urgency, Rick, of a final. No, it hasn't quite reached that yet. They're building up to it. Bailey Williams uh, has been caught behind a couple of times, uh, but he has spoiled to uh, bring the ball to ground. That was good to see him leading out. And enforcing himself on this ruck contest, the umpire judges it was a push. So Glanford gets a free kick for the GWV Rebels. Long high kick, or oh, flying from behind, unable to bring it in was Frawley for the Stingrays. Rebels, loose handball, comes out of the contest. Hurry kick from Hill. Works well to Lloyd, who tried to get it to Eugel Hagen up against the paintwork. He saw it over the boundary line before he got the kick away, so we will throw it in. Eugel Hagen, Jamar, Jamar Eugel Hagen, one of the players that uh, AFL Draft Central's Pete Williams picked out last week as one to watch over the coming years in the under-18 competitions. Bottom major. 16 years old. Poor. And an exciting talent as we got a glimpse last week. Hurried kick from Young, bobbling on the centre wing. Rebels with numbers, they try and work it to Hill. Gathered, tackled, dumped. Good work by Taylor. They get the turnover. Running clear is Bain. Runs to half forward, kicks it inside, attacking 50. William Strong grab. Well done, Finlay Bain. Fantastic disposal of the footy. And good to see him take the game on and give it to one of the best marks in the TAC Cup competition in Bailey Williams. And first time Ricky's found a little bit of space inside attacking 50 Bailey Williams. Yeah, it was another well-weighted kick to the forward. So named as the one of the followers in the TAC Cup team of the year. Comes in. Chipped at it. And puts it to the near side. 1-4-10, the Dandenong Stingrays. It's the margin that they lead by on the NG scoreboard with the GWV Rebels yet to score. We're over the 15-minute mark on the Technica time clock. Braden Hallier brings the ball in, long kick. Plenty of Stingrays there, but they haven't got the footy. They get it out to Lloydy. Matty Lloyd on the right boot. Kicks in up to half forward. Mark taken by Charlie Wilson. Wilson spearing kick inside 50. Carlin runs onto it. Trips at the, the wrong time. Snap it. Goal. Behind. First goal for the Rebels. They're behind. Danny Nong are 10. On 10. Good to see two of the Rebels superstar players in Charlie Wilson and Maddie Lloyd getting involved in that passage of play. They've got to start trying to have the footy in their forward half for them to score. Garn brings the ball back in for Danny Nong. Carlin gets into a bit of trouble but gets out. Now it's a kick in through uh, Jennings. Ball drops front and square. Rebels looking to pounce. Danny Nong, cool. Lovely transfer. Bedford goes out wide. Sees McDonald. He gets it across to foot, foot by foot, looking for Williams. They keep it in front and snap it, goal. Ned Kale, clever footy, Bailey Williams. Wasn't in a real position to mark, sort of tapped the ball down in front of him, knowing that uh, Ned Kale would be there and he gets the goal. Named as the 23rd man also, so it'll be interesting to see how much game time he gets. When Dandenong move the ball like that, it's so hard to stop. Their ball movement is precise, quick and clean, and it's extremely hard to stop when they get their running game going. Super impressive passage of play and good finish from Ned Cahill. And a bit like his name's sake. <laughs> Plays for the Socceroos. Ball inside attacking 50 for the GWV Rebels. Bouncing ball. Martin was trying to keep his opponent under pressure. Eugle Hagen picked it up and puts it through for a minor score. Rebels having a couple of opportunities late in this opening term. They're two behind. And the Stingrays, who are 2 4 16, have stood on the white line of the goal square. So we're going to get a ball up deep inside, attacking 50 for the GWV Rebels. Good opportunity for them to capitalise on a rare Danny Nong error. No excuse, Rick. No, they've got a. No, they've got to be better than that at this stage of the year. 
So ball up. Stingrays try to keep the ball in play. It's dangerous. Ball on the deck. Carlin fired the handball out. Hurry oh. snap from Grant. It's just a, a little too acute with the angle. Touched and over the boundary line and out of play. Deep inside attacking 50 for the Rebels. 18 minutes into the opening term on the Technica time clock. Tossed back in. Again, another hurried snap came off hands. Huss waits, caught, caught. Got the handball away in time. Taylor running off half back. Goes wide. Lohman juggling it. And the umpire's picked out a free kick and it will go the way of the Stingrays. They take the advantage. Hurried kick inside attacking 50. Picks up Bowman. Had the first shot on goal of the game and picked it and he didn't score. So Good mover for 198 centimetres, Bowman. Certainly very agile. Hopefully he kicks this a little bit better than his first opportunity. So after the Rebels weren't able to capitalise on their opportunity, will the Stingrays make them pay? Comes in and goal umpire didn't move. Bowman gets his first. Dandenong moved to 3-4-22. The lead is 20 points on the NG scoreboard. We're ticking towards 20 minutes on the Technica time clock. Rick? Yeah, just got to be a bit more pressure on the ball carrier at the moment. Um, Danny using their uh, elite kicking skills and getting it forward uh, to a one-on-one -on -one situation. Is the ball movement as quick as it looks to be up here in the, in the commentary box? No, he's just fresh air, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, I might need to turn up Siobhan. No worries. You can do that. Secondary ball up. As up she goes. Oh, nice little tap out the back. Taken for the Rebels by Dawson. He kicks to half forward. Leading in the race is Garn. Garn comes through like a train. Handball over the back. Now there's an interception. Chaos ball. Yugle. Oh, a few rebels here. They're a bit of a chance. Snap. Cross the face and bounces just inside the line. Yugle Hagen just is someone I'm going to enjoy calling for the next couple of years. Exciting talent. Mm. We are 20 metres around from the Rebels' goal in the shadows of quarter time. Be a good time for them to just to get one. Just a good steady out. Just keep them in the contest. Bounces. Plenty of stingrays. Look away handball, but the other guy wasn't looking. Huss wait. He's wrapped up in a tackle. Spits one out in the end. They kick to centre wing. At the back is Lohman. He works hard. Fires off the handball. Stingrays hunting in, in packs here. The ball, they're looking to get it to foot. And there's a free kick. And it's going the way of GWV. And that has been taken by Riley Polkinghorn. His kick's intercepted. They go inboard. Danny Nong. Been relentless going into attack. Interception. Again, loose handball. It could come unstuck. Now it does. Bain. They get it across to Taylor. Quick kick up to half forward. And it is Schnering on his own half back out of side of the ground. Just pokes a short one. Went through everyone. Stingrays mopping up. We'll send it towards centre half forward where Bowman takes the mark. Dishes the handball off immediately. And Foot's kick is offline. And just failing to take it there was Kale before it went through for a minor score. 3 5 23 the Stingrays leading the Rebels. Two behinds on the NG scoreboard. And the kick back in is turned over. Cottrell takes the mark. 
half forward flank out of side for the Dandenong Stingrays. And looks fairly confident to have a shot too. Put the mouth guard straight into the sock. We'll have to kick it from 50 out. Got underneath it, will fall short. Williams floating across, came off hands. Cahill stuck the toe out, minus score. Flick the post. 3-6-24, the Stingrays leading the Rebels two behinds on the NG score. That would have been a classic Cahill goal. <laughs> it would have been too. <laughs> Up they go. Williams, it drops to Husway. He puts in a shorty looking for a teammate. Drops what probably should have taken. <coughs> now the ball is smothered up in a pile of players. The ball will be thrown up. Time check, Matt. 23 and yeah, almost four. 24 minutes. Correct. I've mentioned it many times when we've called the Danny Nong Stingrays. They're very tall side, but their tall players are very agile and very dangerous. Snap it goal. Oh. That is an absolute AFL Draft Central goal of the day contender by Kale. Nettie Kale gets his second. It is Danny Nong's fourth. Fourth. They move on to four goals. You better do I can't see it, Matthew. <laughs> four, six, thirty. The Stingrays leading the Rebels two behinds on the NG scoreboard. He started the game magnificently, Ned Cahill. I mentioned before they're a tall side, Dandy Nong, but those little players such as Ned Cahill can cause a lot of damage. All right. Our goal kickers in the first please. Siobhan's got them? Yes, for the Dandy Nong Stingrays, two goals to Ned Cahill and singles to Riley Bowman and Lachlan McDonnell. And for the GWV Rebels, yet to score a goal in that first quarter. And the Stingrays lead it by... 28 points. Crooksy. 28 points here at quarter time. We'll take a break. Be back on the other side of this. This is Tech Cup Radio bringing you Tech Cup Elimination Final Day through the TAC Cup website. Technica is an Australian company that's been importing Italian made and European designed cooking appliances and white goods for almost 20 years. Technica appliances are a fusion of cutting edge technology and contemporary design, providing a high level of style and sophistication to any kitchen. This is why so many leading architects, developers, interior designers and builders use Technica appliances because like their customers, they want the very latest in innovation and quality. Technica, proud sponsor of the Northern Knights and TAC Cup Radio. Executive Maintenance has grown to be a preferred facility maintenance provider by maintaining excellence for over 25 years. A registered domestic and commercial building practitioner, Executive Maintenance provides facility maintenance for government, corporate, property and retail sectors. Whether it's a handyman for your corporate space or a fully qualified crew to manage your project, Executive Maintenance has the knowledge and expertise to provide a personal yet professional service. If you need assistance with your building maintenance needs, email admin at executivemaintenance.com.au. Executive Maintenance, a proud sponsor of TAC Cup Radio. Another year of TAC Cup football and your number one AFL draft site is back and bigger than ever. Z Media, powering AFL Draft Central, continues to revolutionise the way AFL draft content is reported. In 2018, the team has increased to more than 40 writers who will provide powerful and cutting-edge stories nationwide. With draft news, features and women's football coverage, AFL Draft Central is your one-stop shop for AFL draft content. Head to afldraftcentral.com.au or start up to date with us on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. Check out at AFL Draft Central. Cowboys Cash and Carry have the largest range of clothing bargains in the northern suburbs for the whole family. School wear and work wear has just arrived and is half the price you would expect to pay at major stores. A family run business, Cowboys Cash and Carry has new stock daily and 15,000 square feet of bargains. Come and see what the northern suburbs are raving about. Mention this ad and get 10% off their already cheap prices. Cowboys Cash and Carry, 169 Settlement Road, Thomastown, open seven days. Essendon captain Heppel settles and he's done it. He's slotted through the match winning goal. Rockhead flies high across the pack and takes a classic mark. Pendlebury's leading from the front, clocking up the possessions today. And young gun pup Cal Porter is looking good in his debut match. Gippsland Power generates footy legends and NG is the power behind Gippsland Power. NG Hazelwood are proud to be helping tomorrow's future stars as major sponsor of Gippsland Power. Gippsland Power, the backyard playground of tomorrow's future stars. Go Power!
Nixon Finance has been running in the Plenty Valley area of Greensboro for over 20 years. As your financial consultants and brokers, they specialise in all your equipment and vehicle finance needs. Home loans, business loans, commercial property loans. They deal with all the banks and get the right loan that suits your needs. Call Phil Smith during business hours on 94352600 or email nixonfinance at big. On TACCup.com.au, this is TAC Cup Radio. Welcome back to Icon Park. Uh, leading the GWV Rebels by 28 points. And Rick will be speaking to Phil Partington shortly. He's just waiting for him to break from the huddle, which he is now. Yeah, just a bit of a message through the the, the centres or the middles was to um, just get their starting positions right, have them in the right areas, and then uh, try and get to one-on-one -on -one situations down the line. And, uh, yeah, rather than kicking to an outnumbered uh, across that half-forward line. I've got uh, Phil Partington with me, boys and uh, ladies, talent manager of uh, the Rebels. Uh, Pato, um, how did you see that first half, or first quarter, sorry? It was probably not enough forward entries. Oh, I saw you had about two or three forward entries there, but uh, yeah, Dan Ong, to their credit, was uh, yeah, their their spread, their 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 pace from the spread surely showed showed us up a fair bit there. So. Uh, yeah, our contested footy was down a bit too, so uh, we need to improve that. And uh, just watching the outside play, because they're getting it too quickly outside to where their runners are. Uh, they're, they're a good team, we understand that, and uh, we're, we're up against it. But uh, yeah, hopefully the pressure's a bit, bit, bit more improved this quarter. Yeah, it was noticeable their foot skills were allowed and, and just made it easier inside 50 for them. Well, I think we had 13 tackles that quarter, so uh, yeah, that's not where our trademark is at the moment. So we want to actually put a lot of pressure on the ball carrier uh, to hopefully spill the ball up into our forward line in yep. kick goals. And what was the thoughts before the game when you came up here? Um, you give yourself a red hot chance. Oh, yeah, absolutely. We, we actually said uh, Federer got beaten during the week, didn't he? So, uh, <laughs> yeah, so look, they're the best team in there. 17 boys going to draft combines. We've only got a couple. But uh, anything happened in footy in finals, you look at the Demons last night, the, the amount of pressure they put on the Geelong Footy Club, that's what we're trying to do. So yep. we'll see how we go the next uh, three quarters. And it uh, must have been pleasing last week, the form uh, bringing it into the finals. Oh, it was. And you, you, know, you look at the pressure we played on to the Northern Knights last week. It was outstanding. It was like our first final. That's, we, that's how we, we sort of promoted it to the boys. And uh, now we're into the next final now and see how we go against the best team in the competition. All right. Thanks, Phil. Uh, enjoy the rest of the game. Good on you, Rick. That's a fantastic comparison, John Millman, Roger Federer. <laughs> it just proves in sport you never know what will happen on the day. No. Uh, if you've got the right mindset, you can achieve anything. That's what happened for the Rebels last week against the Northern Knights. Convincing victors are up at Mars Stadium. And they just don't seem to have the same intensity here today, which is costing them. Especially there was a couple of times where they turned the ball over inside defensive 50. Just a couple of lazy kicks. Um, they had a couple of opportunities go, too. Up this forward. game, mate. Um, <laughs> and weren't able to capitalise on them either. Dan and Ong, I don't think, are playing at 100% either, though. They, they, um, they just... It's not a convincing performance or a dominant performance. They're just doing what they need to do to get by, especially in that first term, whether they get a tune-up from the Coach of the Year in the TAC Cup. Yeah, it's true. Um, it's quite are they, a time. Are they just playing <laughs> Alistair Clarkson process-driven <laughs> football? <laughs> Something along those Not lines. Going for the emotional <laughs> stuff or the tactical stuff. It's more just we, we play to a process and uh, off we go. The Rebels certainly need to hamper up their pressure. That's the only way to not allow Dandy Nong to get that. As Rick mentioned before, they're very good kicking side, very good with their hands and their kicking. They uh, precision, really. Um, and the only way to stop them from being allowed to do that is by applying heaps of pressure. That's what they need to improve on in that second, in this second quarter. All right. Here, a few people come getting off the ground. I want to see the Rebels just bring some urgency. The first thing we noted last week in wildcard round, in that first game especially, mm. was uh, with Calder and Geelong. There was a step up from home and away. And this is almost like a step back down to what home and away footy's like. Yep. We want that urgent, that, you know, it's curtains if you lose. So 
there's no use leaving anything. And some of these boys on the park are going to be playing their last game of under-18 footy. So, you know, go out with a bang. Leave it all out on the ground. All right, second quarter action. It's the sting raised by 28. Take it away, Meadow. Thank you, Phil Crooks. Williams palmed it down beautifully, almost followed up his own ruck work there. Tackle laid on by Dawson for the Rebels. Stingrays, hurry kick away from the contest, goes straight down the throat of Polkinghorn at half back for the Greater Western Victoria Rebels. They come wide to Jaden Wright, who's had a fair bit of the footy in defensive 50 so far this match. The Rebels work it out wide. They're searching for Cleaver. Takes it on the half volley. Tries to get it to Lohman. Was impacted in the contest. Stingrays at the fall of the ball. Hamill. Now Williams. Loops the handball over the top. They've got movement on the outer side. Handball inboard searching for Fletcher. Went astray. Lohman. He's wrapped up. Sitting over the top of the footy. It's extracted. Good work from the Rebels. The kick from Dawson was smothered. It was Bain getting it across there to Taylor. Puts it in board, searching for Huss weight. Good use of hands. Back to Fletcher. Just over-possessing the footy at the moment, the Dandenong Stingrays. Eventually, they get a high ball inside 50. Clear space, but unable to bring it in there. It was coming. Just a little lapse. Carlin off half back now for the Rebels. Searching for Hill. Got punched out of his hands over the boundary line and out of play right in front of our broadcast position here at Icon Park. Beautiful day of footy. Nice to have September in Melbourne. Sun is shining. There's the tap. Palm down from Williams, Rebels. Hurry kick from Wilson. Bouncing ball at half forward. Grant. His handball was intercepted. Dragged in. Empire says nothing doing. I shall ball this up. Craig Black, coach of the Dandenong Stingrays, would be impressed with the way that they're defending. Their defence has done well in this game so far. Again, they... Just try and work it by hand. Fletcher had a fair bit of the footy. Got it across to Frawley. Kicks it down along the line. Searching for McDonald. Paddles it in front of himself. Somehow managed to keep it in play. Gained an extra 10 metres. That was good work there from McDonald. Under a heap of pressure. Just paddling it in front of himself. Keeping it moving. Got an unkind bounce eventually. But uh, good pressure act. Ball to be thrown in right in front of Combox. High up in the Carlton Legend stand. Williams uses his strength. Gets Glanford out of the way. Fletcher over the top handball. Now they run forward through Taylor. Runs through 50. Sets sail for home. What a lovely goal. Saw it open. The game just opened up for him and uh, he was off to the races. That is Taylor's first goal. Am I right? Or is it yes, second? it's Jai Taylor's first goal. He's had a good start to the game as well. Got a set of good set of wheels on him and he's very agile and certainly picks up a lot of the football along with a lot of his Danny Dong Stingrays teammates. Score check. Has a, is the scoreboard working well up there, Rick? 5-6-36 to two behinds. That and can't be right, can it? Ooh. Yeah, that's right. Five, six, what, right. Is Five, there a time six. clock down there? Uh, 20 minutes. 21 oh, minutes down. to okay. go. Ball comes back inside 50 for Danny Nong. Rebels defend through Jaden Wright. Kicks it to centre wing. Taylor's got it again. Caught, tackled, holding the ball. Oh, no. no. Sling. My goodness. Lux of Fortune. Oh, now he's kicked smothered. Chapter of accidents. Justice. Rebels. Not sure about the handball. Incorrect disposal for mine. Ball comes over the top. They search inside. 50. Comes, oh, comes in the back. Bedford might have been caught high. Williams. 
creates a bit of a path, taps it on. That is Cottrell, who kicks out wide, and the mark is taken by Ned Cahill. The Rebels would not be happy with their defence in that passage of play, allowing Ned Cahill to stand by himself and wait for the ball to come to him with no opponent. He goes in short. This is... Uh, I don't want it to get it too ugly, but... Uh, Loose checking there by the Rebels. Once again, I think it's in the hands of Sam Fletcher. Just able to find a heap of space. By every entry inside 50 for the Stingrays, it seems that they're presenting. And then the kicks, they're precise, they're accurate, they're hitting their targets on the chest. That's what they've been known for throughout the year. Sam Fletcher up to seven disposals now, lining up for his first goal of the day. Kicks long, low, hard and accurate. That is his first. That is Danny Nong's sixth. They move on to 6-6-42 on the NG scoreboard. I keep going to say North Ballarat, Matthew. <laughs> I can't get it out of my psyche. The GWV Rebels are just the two behinds and we are six minutes in on the Technica time clock. The scary part is I don't feel like Danny Dong are playing at their best. No. They're going at half pace and they've extended their lead to a pretty convincing margin at this point in the game. Coming won the tap down for the Stingrays who were able to smother the kick. That was Young. Sits over the top of the footy. The umpire says he gets shoved in the back on the way down. So Hayden Young in the middle. Oh, again, a beautiful lead from the Stingrays. Taking the mark is Sturt. Long ball inside, 50. Again, a precise kick. Just unable to bring it in there was Bowman. Lohman makes the tackle. Kay, uh, that, sorry, that was uh, Bain that was taken out of the contest. The umpire says, give it to me, I will ball it up. About 40 metres out from goal. Broadcast side for the Stingrays. Rebels are eventually able to get it to Hill up against the boundary line. Pokes nice the kick. kick to Carlin. Half back for the Rebels. Wants to come inboard with the kick. Cottrell almost intercepted. Has support. They work it to Frawley. High ball inside 50 is good. Cahill takes a mark. Pokes it back to Cottrell, who is directly in front, 40 metres out from goal. Missed his first sh set shot on goal, so it's his second opportunity to kick one. And once again, Danny Nong Stingrays are just dominating around the ground and able to keep the ball in their forward half. And again, able to find space. They're just doing those one percenters constantly better than the GWV Rebels, who... Just can't click into gear like they did last week against the Northern Knights. Cottrell comes in, puts the kick on its way from about 45 Ooh. metres out. Great Much drop punt. Much better. So the Stingrays move to 7-6-48 on the NG scoreboard. Their lead is 46 points because the Ripples only have two behinds. And we are over the eight-minute mark on the Technica time clock down on ground level. Rick Morris. Yeah, that's kicking skills of uh, Matt Cottrell there showing up. Uh, beautiful kick he is. Also, um, Sam Sturt, he's one of the best kicks in the competition. No doubt about that. Uh, beautiful uh, left foot. Cumming gets the tap down. Rebels. Might have been a free kick there. Not paid. Husswaite coming. They get the handball out. Back to Husswaite. He's just running straight down the ground. Kicks, just goes to the left. Another behind. That is 7-7-49. Seven, seven, need to get the tape measure out then. He might have run his full distance. <laughs> Danny Nong doing as they like. Oh. Now oh the ball goodness. has come in short and Williams has come in. Interesting to see what Bailey does here. Tell you what, he hasn't had a lot of the footy, but I've liked his game. He's been impacting contests. He's been applying pressure. He gets his teammates involved in the game if he's not able to take the mark himself, which is the first sign of a good key forward. Bailey Williams, tight angle, 20 metres out. Kicks across. 
just sneaks it in for a behind. I've noticed his kicking in the second half of this year has certainly gone astray. His marking still as good as ever, but missing quite a few set shots, although that was a pretty tough angle to kick from. I just checked with Ned Carl um, that he's definitely the, only got a half a footy as the 23rd man. So it, uh, he's playing a great game. Well, he's getting his, he's getting his money's worth. Yep. <coughs> Lohman oh. kicks out of bounds on the full. And he's very lucky there, young Hallier. He kicked the ball away after the ball had gone out of bounds on the full. It actually should be 50 metres. To throw in. No, 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 no. Out in the full. If only we had a replay of that one. <laughs> After all that, it's foot by foot that goes inboard, finds Plumridge. Plumridge. Cheers. <laughs> I don't know. I'll just let you decide what he did there. And he kicks it to Fletcher. I don't even think he knew what I he think did I think that was then. a half sell of candy and then you thought, don't want to get caught. I, don't, I didn't want to say that he was you know, trying to, you know, turn him inside out with a blind turn because it was the worst blind turn I've ever seen in my life. Sammy Fletcher with the ball in his hands. Directly in front, he'll kick from 38, 39 metres out, bang. Kicks, just goes to the right. Another behind. Score check, Matt. 7, 8, 50 to two behinds. 51. Lohman. <coughs> comes in short, Taylor. They're kicking out of defence today. The Rebels has really let them down. Everyone here in Danny... Every, not only the Danny Nong Stingrays, everyone in Danny Nong's lining up to have a kick here. <laughs> That's They're all jumping third. up and down, wanting to pass it to him. That's the third intercept in, inside 50 today. I oh, know. Taylor. He'll kick from 50. Already has one. Got the nice cherry red boots. Ball just gets to the goal square. Oh, oh my, my goodness. And our man, Nettie Kale. I Only, was waiting for that. He's only got a half a footy. How many goals have you got? Three. Three. And I'm extremely disappointed that he's not going to be playing the second half because he is really putting his best foot forward for the Nixon Finance Player of the Day. He's been excellent. Still might get a vote. He's waiting for the Cahill. Cahill. Yeah, Cahill. Oh, I wanted him to go over to the point post and box it <laughs> after he kicked it. <laughs> All right, Scott, Matthew, I'll let you go. The score and off you go. Um, oh, hang on, I haven't updated it. 8 9 57, the Stingrays leading the Rebels two behinds on the NG scoreboard as they'll clear it again through Fletcher. Long ball inside 50. Just no one able to take a clean possession away from it, chasing it towards the line is Jennings. For the Rebels, we'll throw it in. <coughs> Half forward flank, city side of Icon Park. Sting, Stingrays kicking to the Ligon Street end in this second term. Shallow throw in. Williams got a fingertip to it. Again, a lot of players around the footy for the Dandenong Stingrays. The umpire says they were holding the ball, though, and the Rebels will get a free kick. To take it will be James Cleaver. Half back. And they're going to try and switch play. Jennings takes the mark. Oh, Dinky kicked oh. a Lloyd. It bobbles out of his hands. Opportunity opens up for Dandenong. They're caught. Unable to get it away. But again, just too cute from the Rebels. Not enough purpose drive in their kicks. And almost another intercept inside, inside defensive 50. Ball up, Williams palms it to the top of the goal square. Hill just slaps it through for another minor score. 8 10 58 on the NJ scoreboard. The Stingrays, they lead by 56 points, ticking over 14 minutes in the second term on the Technica time clock. By hand. 
They're going to lose it again. Plumridge comes out. Bedford goes back in board. Nice sidestep. Snap at goal. And that is Finlay Bain. That's an AFL Draft Central Goal of the Day contender. And Danny Nong uh, doing this with one hand tied behind their back. It is 9-9. Nine, 9-10, nine. Nine, to two behinds. Um, I think the thing we can't lose sight of is it's 1v9 where they finished on the ladder. Yep. Um, can't forget that. And uh, the Rebels have gone in with, uh, I think it's 10 uh, bottom age players. And Danny Long have been the best performed team all year. No doubt. Glanford gets it across to Grant. And then the Rebels are all tied up. Only lost the one game in the home and away season, the Stingrays, and that was by one goal to the Oakley Chargers down at Warrawee Park. As there will be a high free kick going the way of the Stingrays. And it will be Sam Fletcher, who was named on the interchange bench in the TAC Cup Team of the Year last week at the best and fairest. As it goes towards the top of the 50, Sturt just bobbled out of his hands on that occasion. Rebels try and clear it. But Matthew Garn stands in their way. Comes across to Fletcher. Centre wing out of side. Fletcher, long ball inside, attacking 50. Rebels, do they claim the mark? They are. Harris Jennings gets it across to Cleaver, who puts it towards the outer side. But again, the Stingrays will mop up. Fletcher sends it back towards half forward. Pack flies. Rebels didn't talk. Ball to the deck. Williams got a hand to it. Rebels have numbers to respond, though. Wareham. Haven't called him too many times today for the Rebels. They chip it down along the line and hit up Grant. Centre wing on the outer side. Pokes the kick. Oh, Glanford got crunched. Ooh. Cottrell off half back. A little indecisive, but went to Stenning. He goes over the top, and now the Stingrays will work it clear. Garn takes the mark. Defensive side of the outer wing comes in board to Fletcher. Still on half back for the Dandenong Stingrays. Given the hurry up, he flicks it out wide. The mark will be taken here by Stenning. He comes to the broadcast side where Foot takes the mark. Cute kick. Puts his teammate under all sorts yeah. of pressure in Bedford. Foot got it back. They're working it by hand. Young, inside 50, precise kick once again. Mark is taken by Bain, puts it over the top, and the mark is taken directly in front by Jai Taylor, who already has one goal so far today, Siobhan. Their kicking, field kicking, is just incredible to watch. It's always precise, it always hits a target. How on earth did that happen? Bowman oh, take, takes the mark in a paddock. Oh, my goodness. It's that was the biggest piece of land in Melbourne that he just had. <laughs> yeah, lacks checking from the Rebels. They're starting to get a little bit frustrated. Riley Bowman, 45-degree angle. Will kick from 40 metres out. And, oh, he's pushed that well to the right. Kicked one goal today, Riley Bowman, and has kicked two behind. So something for him to work on is goal kicking. So 9-11-65 on the NG scoreboard, the Dandenong Stingrays. They lead the Rebels, who have just scored the two behind so far, and we're ticking towards 19 minutes on the Technica time clock. Coming straight back in. They, uh, there is just a vacant block of land inside forward 50 for Dandenong. Tell you what, it would have a price tag of about 20 million of the size that is currently in there. Uh, Husswade has marked this. One, one thing I am picking up, Rick, I'm, I'm enjoying them kicking to advantageous spots to have set shots at goal rather than go into the pockets. Yes. Yeah, they've really uh, opened up and... And they've got some really good skilled players that are having shots on goal as well. 
Husswaite lining up for his first goal of the day. The left footer comes in and puts it straight through. And it continues, Campbell Husswaite. That's his first? That's his first goal of the day. The skipper been busy in and around the midfield. Certainly a tough and hard player. Named on the interchange bench as well. A number of players part of the TAC Cup team of the year, as you would expect from the top side. But Husswaite also finished equal third in the best and fairest with 14 votes. He did. NG scoreboard 10-11-71. The Stingrays, the Rebels are two behinds. And we are just hitting 20 minutes into the second quarter here in the first elimination final. Rebels just coughed it up once again. That was their best passage of the day and unfortunately resulted in another turnover. <laughs> McDonald gets the handball over the top to Plumridge, centre wing broadcast <coughs> side. Pops it over the top, Huss wait. Cleaned up beautifully there, gets it to Bowman, goes inboard with Frawley, just a little too easy. Martin, though, able to cause the intercept. Huss wait. Man oh, all over goodness. him. We'll get one for a high tackle. And he'll poke it. Good in boy. Just a little bit short. Sharing has support, and the Rebels are able to get a clearing kick. Hamill standing in their way, though. Goes long back towards centre half forward, and they've got the mark. The Dandenong Stingrays in Ned Kale. Pokes it inside 50. Williams on the lead takes the mark. It's all too easy at the moment. They are flexing their muscles at Danny Nong Stingrays. The winner of this game plays either the Sandringham Dragons or the Murray Bush Rangers in a preliminary final. And those two sides, if they are watching this game today, would think, what have we got to do to beat the Danny Nong Stingrays? Of course, Sandringham got done by the Stingrays in Dandenong's last outing down at Trevor Barger Beach Oval. As Williams. That's... His first of the day and number 11 for the Stingrays. They move to 11-11-77 to the GWV Rebels. Yet to get a major on the board. Two behinds. We're 21 and a half minutes in to the second term on the Technica time clock. Oh, tough day at the office for the Rebels. Ball thrown up. McKeldrew gets the tap out. Roves his own ruck. Held without uh, having possession of the footy and gets the result in free kick. The Rebels go inside 50. Big pack of players. Fletcher underneath for Danny Nong. It's intercepted. They feed the ball out to Carlin. He'll get a look at goal. And he gets it through. Good on you, Scotty Carlin. Good work. That's got one on the board for the Rebels. Fantastic. That's definitely reward for effort. One goal, two are the GWV Rebels on the NG scoreboard. And Dandy Nong. 11-11-77. Sunset Strip. And we are 23 minutes in on the Technica time clock. They deserved a goal before half-time. They haven't played poorly. They've just got an opposition that are playing a lot better than them. As they bring it wide. Uh, Rebels again under all sorts of pressure are taken into the turf. No prior opportunity and we will ball it up. Here's the sun down on ground level. Yeah, it's beautiful conditions here. I think Ned Carl will be a bit disappointed coming off with two minutes to go. As Lloyd... Just had to make sure Rick was still awake down on the boundary as it comes wide. Jennings gets it over the top to Schnering, who gets it across to Hill, pokes it inside 50. It was a good kick, accurate kick. Went down the throat of the opposition in Young. Goes out wide, mark taken by McDonnell. He goes further to foot. And he'll hit up Bowman, centre wing on the outer side. I like this guy. Riley Bowman, the start of the year was 198 centimetres. That kick. Well done, Crooksy. Sorry about that, Riley. <laughs> <laughs> Commentator's curse. <laughs> <laughs> Always the way. All right. 
They bring the ball back in. Nice mark taken for Strong the rap. Rebels. They go up forward. Off the hands of the pack. They're a show here. Can't get it over the top. Or oh, they had Jed Hill. But couldn't get across. Danny Nong. Kick to centre wing. Mikel Drew marks. That's 50 metres, umpire. Yep. Yes, good call, Cooksy. Oh, a nice oh, one on half time. On goal. Just Rick, before half time. Rick, just, just really quickly, is everything okay with Sam Sturt down on the boundary line? He's um, he's got a bit of tape around his knee, so they're just letting him walk up and down the um, the sideline there. So he's copped a bit of a bump on it by the look of it. All right, let's see if the Rebels can. Uh, just get another one just before the big break. Big McElrew comes in, kicks, and he did. Good on you, young fella. That's obviously going to be his first. And the Rebels at half time on the NG scoreboard are 2 2 14. Dandy Nong are 11 11 77. The goal kicker, Siobhan. For the Dandenong Stingrays, three goals to Ned Cahill and all singles to Sam Fletcher, Jai Taylor, Riley Bowman, Finlay Bain, Campbell Hustle, McDonnell, Bailey Williams and Matthew Cottrell. And for the GWV Rebels, singles to Scott Carlin and right on half-time, Darcy McEldrew. All right, big lead for the Stingrays at half-time following this match. We've got... The Gippsland Power taking on at the Geelong Falcons. It is Tech Cup Radio bringing you Elimination, elimination Final Day live through the TAC Cup website. Technica is an Australian company that's been importing Italian-made and European-designed cooking appliances and white goods for almost 20 years. Technica appliances are a fusion of cutting-edge technology and contemporary design, providing a high level of style and sophistication to any kitchen. This is why so many leading architects, developers, interior designers and builders use Technica appliances because like their customers, they want the very latest in innovation and quality. Technica, proud sponsor of the Northern Knights and TAC Cup Radio. Cowboys Cash and Carry have the largest range of clothing bargains in the northern suburbs for the whole family. School wear and work wear has just arrived and is half the price you would expect to pay at major stores. A family run business, Cowboys Cash and Carry has new stock daily and 15,000 square feet of bargains. Come and see what the northern suburbs are raving about. Mention this ad and get 10% off their already cheap prices. Cowboys Cash and Carry, 169 Settlement Road, Thomastown, open seven days. Executive Maintenance has grown to be a preferred facility maintenance provider by maintaining excellence for over 25 years. A registered domestic and commercial building practitioner, Executive Maintenance provides facility maintenance for government, corporate, property and retail sectors. Whether it's a handyman for your corporate space or a fully qualified crew to manage your project, Executive Maintenance has the knowledge and expertise to provide a personal yet professional service. If you need assistance with your building maintenance needs, email admin at executivemaintenance.com. .com.au. Executive Maintenance, a proud sponsor of TAC Cup Radio. Another year of TAC Cup football and your number one AFL draft site is back and bigger than ever. AdZ Media, powering AFL Draft Central, continues to revolutionise the way AFL draft content is reported. In 2018, the team has increased to more than 40 writers who will provide powerful and cutting-edge stories nationwide. With draft news, features and women's football coverage, AFL Draft Central is your one-stop shop for AFL draft content. Head to afldraftcentral.com.au or stay up to date with us on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. Check out at AFL Draft Central. Essendon captain Heppel settles and he's done it. He's slotted through the match winning goal. Ruffhead flies high across the pack and takes a classic mark. Pendlebury's leading from the front, clocking up the possessions today, and young gun pup Cal Porter is looking good in his debut match. Gippsland Power generates footy legends, and NG is the power behind Gippsland Power. NG Hazelwood are proud to be helping tomorrow's future stars as major sponsor of Gippsland Power. Gippsland Power, the backyard playground of tomorrow's future stars. Go Power! Nixon Finance has been running in the Plenty Valley area of Greensboro for over 20 years. As your financial consultants and brokers, they specialise in all your equipment and vehicle finance needs. Home loans, business loans, commercial property loans. 
They deal with all the banks and get the right loan that suits your needs. Call Phil Smith during business hours on 94352600 or email nixonfinance at bigpond.com. On tacup.com.au, this is TAC Cup Radio. Welcome back to Icon Park, where at half time it is the Dandenong Stingrays 11 11 77 leading the GWV Rebels 2 2 14. We're very fortunate to have a special guest in the commentary box alongside Phil Crooks. I'll let you do the introductions, Crooksy. Fantastic. And uh, joining us at half time today is Paul Hamilton, who is the state talent manager and have been since 2000, October 2016. Yeah, yeah, or just yeah, November we November. started, uh, Brett Ellison, Lee Fraser and myself. Yeah, yeah, so it's been good. Um, f- now, I know who you are, Paul, right? But I'll, I'll fess up, I'm an Essendon member for 50 years, so obviously yeah. I know who you are, but I'd like everyone else to sort of know who you are. And we did the same with Brett Ellison last year with this. Did you talk uh, about his mark, Brett oh, Ellison? Well, we ran over time. We yeah. had to stop calling <laughs> the game. Um, we kept <laughs> going it there. But um, you played for Essendon as a junior and came from St Bernard's. Yes, I did, yeah. You know, a great uh, great sporting school, St Bernard's, when you uh, go through the history. Some pretty good players. And plenty of bombers have come from plenty there. Plenty of bombers. Matthew Lloyd, uh, Simon Madden, Justin Madden. He was only a bomber for a short time, time. of course. Gary Folds. Folds. A lot of games. You know, and you see uh, Gary Folds, 300 games. Simon, Simon Madden was the record holder for a lot, lot of time. Lloydy. Um, yeah, and look, there's been plenty of others. Uh, uh, Jude Bolton's 300 games. So well, there's a there's a lot of at school. So yeah, been a great sporting school when you when you look and see uh, over the years, and they continue to do well. They've won the last two Herald Shields. So they have. Uh, Mitch Hannon last night for Melbourne. Mitch Hannon, yeah, he sport. played for. There was a game just out here at Icon Park. Uh, I think it was three years ago when they won the uh, A grade amateurs. And Mitch Hannon was uh, was running around. He was a real spark in that particular yeah. game for St Bernard's old boys. But uh, yeah, there's and, and he's a St Bernard's boy as well. So there's some Ben Ronkier too this year. Ben, yeah, and Ben Ronk's another. He played that game too, actually. And so yeah, what a what a year he's had as yeah, well. So yeah, you sort of keep an eye on all those uh, all those St Bernard's guys. But, so how did yeah. you get to Essendon? Your, your first year was '86, just after back-to-back premierships. How did, what was your yeah. junior journey to get in there? Well, I was a local uh, as St Bernard's in Essendon, of course. Yeah. So uh, um, I'm old enough to have the under 19 system, of course. And so you always knew that if you were if you were going to make it in the what was in the VFL, um, you were going to go to the club that you were. Uh, located or residentially located to, so I knew all along that if I was going to be good enough, it was it was Essendon. So I got invited down in '84 to the under 19s. I only played a, just a, two or three games because I was um, I was doing year 12, and that was sort of mum and dad's priority. Yep. Maybe not mine, but mum and dad's <laughs> priority at the time. And, uh, and and I was playing for St Bernard's in the uh, in we were in the Footscray District League actually. So. Uh, and I had a good year in that. I, I won the best in the league for the, in the Footscray um, District League, as it was then called. It's now Western Region. And um, and Noel Jenkins and Noel Bosch were the two recruiters, and they, they asked me along. So I played a handful of games in 84. 85, I played, uh, uh, what did it end up being, nine under-19 games, 11 reserve games. And so uh, that was that was a terrific year, and obviously the year the club won the premiership. So... Just to be out there training with those guys was quite exciting. And then, uh, yeah, got my senior debut back in uh, 86 uh, against Fitzroy at Victoria Park. You always remember your first one. First so, one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it was good. I quite, I, we had a, we uh, we obviously had a pretty good side at that time, but we did get a few crucial injuries. Uh, oh. Tim Watson. Um, I could talk about it for yeah. ages. Tim. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Tim. I think Vander broke his Vander, leg. Vander, yeah, Vander as well, and uh, so there was there's quite a few things go wrong, but I suppose that was, f- and uh, we also had the situation where Brad Brickery, um got moved on halfway through the year, and we had Rains Richardson in. So there's a lot of things happened back in Essendon in those days, of course, and but yeah, I was lucky enough to enjoy. Yeah, I was at the club for nine years, so it was uh, yeah, it was good times. Um, so if I could transport the young Paul Hamilton from that yeah. system, yeah. To say if we just put him into the system now, yes, yeah. How, what would your system? What would it be like for you now? Yeah, it'd be looking be very different now because uh, I suppose what the the advantage of a of a tax system is that you've uh, you've got the coaching and you've got. I mean, I didn't. I, I basically just played uh, 
it was just local football really with uh, uh, I actually had a teacher one of the school teachers was my coach for three or four years there at the end um, so yeah to, to be under this sort of system tax system where you've got uh, uh, you know fairly uh, well really good strong coaching and lines of coaching you got your strength and conditioning I mean things that I certainly wouldn't have thought of uh, back in those days and you probably didn't have to because uh, it wasn't done that way. No. But now it's a lot more competitive. And uh, so I think the advantages of these kids in this day and age is, is quite significant. Um, you know, and particularly, I was, a, I was a poor kick. But, you know, and I did, it wasn't really until I got to Essendon that um, you started doing any work on it. So maybe to have had the advantage of working on it for, you know, two or three years prior to that would have been handy as well um, so yeah you do look at those things I I, uh, I certainly when I talk to the coaches and to the talent managers in the TAC I talk a lot about the importance of the fundamentals and uh, in particularly kicking but contested ball uh, all those things because uh, that's that's what you're there for you you know you're there to uh, to improve those fundamentals and make sure that each kid that's that gets the opportunity is getting better so I suppose that's that continues to be a massive priority and you, you do go back to your own uh, you know, you, th you think back and think, well, you know, I would have loved to have worked on a few of those fundamentals at a younger age. But, you know, we, we generally, it was either a dad coaching 25 of us and, yep. um, or one of the teachers in my case as well. And all really good people, really terrific memories of all my coaches. But, you know, they, they, it was one, one amongst 25. Yeah, you're not going to get the individual coaching that you, you'd expect from the TAC Cup in this day and age. It's like a lot of junior sport. Who's the coach? Whoever can get off work early enough to be there at <laughs> yeah, well, 4.30 four or 4 o'clock yeah, to I've put actually, the stuff out. I've actually put my hand up to coach... Uh, Next year, um, which is an interesting one, I, I, uh, I coached for a lot of years, so I was involved at, uh, uh, I coached down at Glenorchy in Tasmania um, as a playing coach, and we had, a, we had a great time down there. Coached at Woodville West Torrens in the SNFL, coached at North Melbourne for four years as a VFL and an assistant coach, Adelaide Crows for another four years there. So. I've done a lot of coach, and I and probably one of the harder things I coached. I was kicked for four years, <laughs> and that is seriously hard work. And uh, you can't underestimate the. Uh, uh, it was great fun, great fun because it, I was kicked's a great thing because you got all the appearance and you've got your uh, um, all these young kids that you're trying to teach for pretty much for the first time they've they've touched yeah. football. So, but you know it, it's a uh, it's it takes. Um, it's a fair bit to teach a kid how to kick a football. Some take do it naturally, but there's a lot of kids that don't. So it was that was a real challenge. It's a big it? object in little hands. It is, I know. It's, yeah. uh, but I really enjoyed that. That was four years of great fun as an Oz kid coach. So I suppose I was able to coach at just about or at every level, um, right across the uh, the spectrum, um, and that gives you good insights, I suppose, when it comes to talent and those sorts of things. Now, yeah. so. You would have been a Western Jet if from where you were living. Yeah, I think so. Well, I, yeah, I would have been. I think I would have been Jets because um, Shannon Grant, the Grant family lived three streets away from me, and I know that the Grant. You know, I know that's where he ended up. So I think I would have been. I lived in Ascot Vale. I think I was about two streets off the Cannons area. area. So uh, yeah, I was two streets off where the Cannons are now, and so I think I would have would have been Jets uh, back in those days. And you, uh, as you mentioned, you, you follow the Bombers growing up? No, I didn't actually. I, I, I sort of did because I watched m way more live Essendon games than any other club. I baked for Carlton primarily because my two brothers baked for Richmond and they were the powerhouses and I just had to go against what my brothers were doing. No, that's <laughs> and, uh, no, that's reasonable. But that's I went reasonable. to uh, a lot of Essendon games. All my friends were Essendon supporters, uh, locals, and we went to Windy Hill quite a bit. Um, and I always knew that if I was going to play, it was going to be at Essendon. So you sort of, you know, there was always, they were almost, always my second team, I suppose. And I certainly went to a lot more games, Essendon games than any, than Carlton or any other team for that matter. So there was, yeah, I, I, I certainly knew the history of the club pretty strongly when I got there. So yeah. now you'd, uh, you've gone through the under-16s at the Jets and you're getting through yeah. there and you have uh, may have played a bit of Metro footy. Yeah. Big Metro footy there. It would have been back Teal Cup back in Teal those Cup days. in ours. I wasn't good enough to make the Teal Cup. or I didn't actually even try out for it. I'm not even sure how you did back then. But no one really noticed uh, noticed me. So, so this is so didn't this even get, uh, like the, the, yeah. the talent to search there yeah, yeah. was more based on self-interest for the club yes, that yeah. you lived in. Yeah, that's they right. were looking after you, whereas yeah, now at yeah. the Jets, everyone's sort of having a look at you and seeing where yeah. you are and you're going through this and that. And then yeah. How would you have gone at the Combine? Yeah, that would have been very interesting. 
Yeah, the, it's American term, isn't it? The yeah. combine used to be the draft calf, and yeah. uh, uh, I, I was, I was, uh, I didn't know it, but I think I was a reasonable athlete. I, I found that out probably when I got to Essen, and I, at school I was a sprinter. I think simply because sprinting was a little bit easier than, than anything else, and I had, I did have okay speed. So at school I did a. You know, I, so I would have done all right from a sprinting point of view, and my endurance I never really worked on. But once I got to Essendon, that you worked on that pretty quickly, and I ended up always being in the, I was always in the top three for nearly every endurance event. So um, I think I would have been all right in the combine. Um, I wouldn't have been great on the, the uh, um, probably the the stretch and uh, the stretching test. I, I could only ever just touch my toes. So, <laughs> <laughs> but most test? of the other things, uh, no, I would have been all right on the beep. I, w- I actually would have been okay. I, I was pretty good. I remember school sports in year 12. I I was uh, pretty reasonably nearly, I, and I tried everything, did high jump. I, actually, I had the school record for triple jump. So I was I was an okay athlete, I suppose. So, yeah, I, I would have been all right. Yeah. And yeah. then you go to draft day and you could yeah. be on any oh. part of this great land. Yeah, I know. I wouldn't have. And, and, and not only this part of land, yeah. it's like one day, the Friday you're here, yeah. next Monday you wake yeah. up and you know, you're in Fremantle. Oh, it is amazing. And I know when I coached at the, at the Crows in particular, but, but even at my experiences at Essendon, North Melbourne and, uh, um, and and at the Crows, you know, that's what happened. You know, you draft a kid and yeah, two days later they're, they're there. And it's a, it's a massive move. I know it's sort of we're conditioned to it now, but yeah. it is a big thing for a family and for a kid to to make that move. And it's intimidating. And some kids adapt really quickly. Um, others don't. And it's it's a longer process. And so yeah, it's one of the uh, it's one of the more difficult things I think for these young people. At the same time, it it can for some kids it's actually a really good thing. It's you know to get that that bit of independence and to start realising well, you know uh, if it is to be it's up to me sort of stuff. It's you know you you don't have uh, mum and dad now to to do it for you. You've got to you've got to start doing a whole range of things, not just obviously not football just play things. Footy. Yeah. yeah, you've got to start to learn to cook. You've got to. Uh, You've, uh, you get a lot of support, and that's the thing that AFL clubs do terrifically well. They they really do support the players, and better than ever now. Um, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it is it is quite amazing how the game's changed and how yeah the whole process has changed for that kid. Yeah. Your overlay of the talent, and this is not just the the boys. This is the girls as well now for you. Yeah, the girls have been so exciting. To be honest, I watched a fair bit of uh, Tat Cup girls this year and as I did last year and the improvement from last year to this year, uh, I'm a conservative person by nature and uh, but I'd have to say it's at least 50% improvement, just the game standard, the skill standard, which is really encouraging and I, um, which is a real credit to each of the regions, to the female talent coordinators, to the coaches that are involved in that whole process. Um, oh, yeah, I've been really impressed with the way the girls' game has improved, and, and it will continue to because as they start younger and keep playing, um, we're going to see some great improvements. But the boys, yeah, no, the boys have been uh, they're, they're very good. You know, you, you, from year to year, it does change a little bit. Obviously, a terrific year for Victoria last year, just about a record year. Um, this year, I'm probably not expecting us to get the same sort of results, but we'll still get a pretty healthy one next year will be a very good year for Victorian talent. There's a lot of talent out there that are currently bottom ages. So, uh, yes, I think that all goes well. Um, lot, still, we've got lots of work to do from a talent perspective, I think, uh, and, and not just at under 16, under 18 level, but at the levels below that as well. We're doing a little bit of work at the moment on there's on putting together, if you like, skills, curriculums and um, almost like minimum standards type things too. So if you're in a talent program and you're under 14, um, we'd expect that you'd be able to you know, handle both hands. Um, it's more for the coaches to say, look, if you've got kids in, in an under 14 talent academy, we've got them right through country Victoria and we're starting to get them in Metro now, um, whether they're interleague or, or talent academies, that you're expected to improve these kids. That's what you're there for as coaches. And so that's the stuff we're going to be putting a massive emphasis on next year in particular. We already have done a bit of that, but we're doing a lot more uh, because as a sport, we want to be able to, um, we want to make sure we are developing and improving kids all the way through the pathway. A lot of sports do it quite well now and uh, we, we need to make sure we're up to speed with that area. So that's quite an exciting area, I think, for the future um, of, of talent in Victoria. There's, there's plenty of kids playing the game. We're still at record numbers in terms of participation figures and those sorts of things. We've just got to make sure we get the, the best out of every kid that comes through. And yeah. as, it, as, it, as they get to this level and some go up, 
some stay about there and some go yeah. back into their local leagues again. Yes. That yeah. should all improve yeah. by natural flow down. Yeah, that's what we'd hope. You know, there's only a certain percentage of kids that are playing tact to get the opportunity to play at AFL. But, uh, you know, we'd love to see a lot of them play, obviously, at VFL and then, of course, at, uh, at the local level and, and be community leaders in their, in their field and hopefully the training they're getting. And you know, it's one of the areas we're hoping to keep improving on uh, next year. We're, we're, we're going to make a big emphasis on the welfare side of things and the leadership side of things. Uh, and some regions do that well already, yeah. I've got to say that. But uh, we, we want to make sure that every region does it well next year and every region is very good on their strength and conditioning. We've got minimum standards employed this year, which we think uh, are really... Matt Glossop's done a terrific job there overseeing that. And then the other area is our coaching to make sure we've got our coaching is as good as it can and as well supported as it can. And we have uh, we will have a metro coach and a country coach um, who will be full-time, who will oversee the six regions each, and they'll be working very closely. So we're, we're pretty excited about what that future means for talent overall. Yeah. And it is. And it's good to see the country teams that are just about to kick off, Paul. Yeah, well, you and is. I can stay here and all day. <laughs> just call the game by yourself. Uh, the country team's doing well. They're yeah. you know, occupying a lot of the high parts of the ladder. Yeah, no, they, they are doing well. <clears throat> and I mean, the big country team is, is at a fair disadvantage because they come together and just play. Yeah. And they don't get to train like every other state. And But that's changing a little bit too. If they're going to have some big camps and... Um, less money at the national level and down to the state. So I think the country will be the big benefactor of all that. So we're pretty exciting for them all. All right, Paul. Thanks, Phil. Thank you very much for joining us today on Tech Cup Radio. Yeah, I'll let you get on and have a good rest of, uh, rest this of the game, day. This game, and then yeah. we hope for the Gippy and uh, oh, Chong. That'll be a great one, I think. All right, thanks, guys. Good on you, mate. Pleasure to have Paul Hamilton here in the commentary box as we get the third term underway here at Icon Park. Stingrays, 11-11-77, leading... The GWV Rebels 2-2-14 and again they're under pressure in defence. Lloyd, he's taken into the turf and the umpire says, give it to me, I will ball it up. Just inside the 50 metre arc. So Stingrays in firm control. Icon Park bathed in sunshine. Bowman up and under kick. Fist from behind, applied from the Rebels. They'll try and enter 50 again. Lloyd down behind play for the Rebels too. In the hands of the trainers just at the moment. Not looking too good. Big thanks to AFL Victoria's Paul Hamilton joining us at half time. Great insight into not only his journey through football, but also a good comparison to see just how far our under 18 pathways have come. Now the talent continues to develop and improve. Is that Matty Lloyd coming off the ground with what looks to be a shoulder injury? It is. We'll cross to Rick in a moment for an update on that as the ball is bobbling around. Still in the Rebels attacking 50 under a heap of pressure was Wilson. Got caught and the umpire said you had time to get rid of it. And you didn't. The tackle laid on by Husswaite. So he gets a free kick inside defensive 50 broadcast side for the Stingrays. He goes wide with a kick, a little too wide. He was searching for Bailey Williams, but it went out on the full down to Rick Morris at ground level for an update on Matty Lloyd. Yeah, he's looking pretty sore at the moment. I'll just um, get back to you whether it's a rib or a shoulder injury. He's looking uh, in a fair bit of pain at the moment. Coming flu for the mark. Couldn't bring it in. And the umpire says it's holding the footy, so the Rebels will get a free kick inside, attacking 50. Martin to take it. They've made a positive start to this third quarter. Mitch Martin can kick this. He's a very long, booming kick. Very tight angle. He's up against the fence at Icon Park. Some instructions being yelled from the Stingrays bench down below. Mitch Martin coming in. Rebels searching for their third goal on the first of the third quarter. It's just pushed to the right-hand side. Stays in play. Stenning kicks it. He was hoping for McDonald. Boundary line beat him, though. Ball over the boundary line and out of play. We'll throw it in on the half-back flank for the Stingrays, which means it's the half-forward flank out of side. City side of Icon Park for the GWV Rebels. They're 2-2-14. Two, two, 
Stingrays 11 11 77. And they'll try and clear it again. No, the umpire said holding the footy and a free kick going the way of Watts for the Rebels. Dished off the handball quickly. Long ball inside 50. Ball off hands. And once again, we're back over the boundary line and out of play. Any update on Matty Lloyd, Rick? Yeah, it looks like a rib injury, um, as we first thought. He's in a bit of pain. All I heard was, wrap me up. So that's a good sign. So ball to be thrown in. Rebels have had it in their attacking 50 for the first four minutes of this term. But again, have been unable to capitalise on it as Dawson's chasing it towards the boundary line. He's seen over and will throw it in. It's positive from the Rebels because if you're going into halftime significantly down on the scoreboard sometimes it can be a real energy sapper but looks like they've come out with intent to try and do as much as they can to stay in the game. Quick handball given off to Stenning who releases the Stingrays off half back once again. It's cut off by Ranieri who will penetrate 50 with the kick. Front spot though Hamill taking the mark. Give the quick handball off. In fact, that's Hamill with the ball now. My apologies. As that, was ba uh, that was Cottrell. Bain having it off half back. He'll chip it short. Cottrell takes the mark. He goes inboard with the kick. Fletcher did well to keep a hand on it. And they get it there to Bedford, who gave the look away handball to no one. Garn went in to try and mop things up. Now the Rebels. Release the kick. It's all Dandenong, though, on the centre wing broadcast side. A chip kick over the top. Hits up foot. Foot goes inboard with the kick. Ranieri mopping up. Here's Wiramu goes wide. Carlin accepts it on the half volley and puts it inside 50. Space there for Grant. Boundary line beats him. They've come out with urgency, the Rebels. In that first half, that would have been a goal to Dandenong. It would have gone all the way down inside 50. But they've come out with a bit more intent to hunt the man and the footy. Ball to be thrown in. We're at the Ligon Street end. In she comes. Pulls up a little bit short there. Neither Ruckman get a good hand to it. Dandenong to clear. Carlin chips in. Goes ringer, ringer, Rosie. Eventually comes over to Glanford, who is just waltzed over the boundary line, right where the 50-metre arc. And just a shout-out to our old mate Gabe Sorrentino. And sadly, his father passed away during the week. Attended his father's funeral yesterday. So shout-out to Gabe, who said he's uh, been listening in. Bowman for Danny Nong. They holding the ball, says the umpire. And they take advantage of which there is zero, and they kick it behind. A bit more urgency from the Rebels uh, so far. Looking good. Got a bit of a uh, reading of the riot act at halftime. Got prime seating down there, Rick, too. Yeah, I've moved down uh, past the Rebels bench now towards the forward 50. Oh, very Some vitamin good. D. <laughs> you come anything we can get you, Rick? <laughs> I've just had a hot dog, so <laughs> I might have to uh, order a Coke or something. Palm leaf, maybe. Husswaite kicks inside 50. Foot, can't quite take it. Continues to harass, tackle. <coughs> yeah, underneath it, Craig Peters can't get rid of it. The umpire will ball this up. Right on the 50 metre arc. Lloyd running around there. On the boundary line. Looks to be in limited discomfort, so maybe he will come back on the ground. Big, long, thumping torpedo punt. They're on half forward. Umpire has a look at that and says, you made no attempt to get rid of it. And the Rebels will take the free kick. Good work. Lots of voice coming from the Dandenong Stingrays bench. This is Mitch Martin. He goes in short and finds Jed Hill. Can't, Jedda. You're a man that can... Set the forward line alight. Hill. Oh, X Factor. Kicks to the top of the square. Oh, over the back. Dangerous. This is much better by the uh, 
the Rebels. Matty Lloyd getting ready to come back on. Lachlan Young to bring the ball back in for Danny Nall. Kicks to the city side of the ground. Two bites of the cherry and the mark is paid. Eugle Hagen goes right to the top of 50, but is intercepted. Hamill goes out to centre wing. This is much better contesting by the Rebels. Craig Peters kicks inside 50, bouncing footy, bit of a chaos ball. Danny Nong, cool, hit by Garn. Comes out wide, mark is taken by Goonan. He gets it across. Not pretty by Danny Nong, not their best passage of play. It ends up with Young, it's intercepted. Eugle Hager, but now foot goes in short. Well done. Close to the boundary. Now foot by hand. Rebel down there on the on the carpet too. Just in the accidental crush. Fletcher gets it across. Snap it. Goal. Gee, I like that one. That was Jake Frawley. Kicked. Uh, it was half a banana, half a helicopter. I reckon. Just sort of span it. Uh, on its axis, left to right. It was a very good kick, straight through the middle. That's Frawley's first goal, and that takes Dandy Nong to 12 goals. 12 11 83 on the NG scoreboard, leading the Rebels 2 4 16. Nine and a half gone on the Technica time clock. And then, Rick, that looks like it's Marnie down there for the Rebels. Yeah, Toby Marnie still getting up as we speak. Got to his feet now and walking back towards the bench. Positive news though, Matty Lloyd back on the ground, centre wing on the broadcast side. As the ball is all wrapped up, back in the middle. And again, Rebels just unable to capitalise on the momentum that they've had in the opening 10 minutes of this third quarter. Only managing two behind, standing on go down the other end and get a goal. Wilson, hot handball out of the contest. Taken by Lamb, inside 50, not great. Mark taken by the Stingrays who move it quickly. Under a little bit of pressure from Hill. Eventually they'll work it clear. Down along the line. Ball brought to ground. <coughs> Desperation from Lohman to try and trap it in. Good work from Bain though to get the handball out. Dandenong try and centre it to Cottrell who takes the mark and copped one over the ear oh, and we'll 50. get a free uh, 50 metre penalty. I thought that was during the contest, um, Lloyd attempting to spoil. <coughs> Not sure that was afterwards. <coughs> Glenn Archer spoil, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> Did that to Matthew Lloyd his whole life. It's I could uh, uh, go through your Essendon list and uh, <laughs> you'd be ashamed. We're going to have to call for that demilitarised <laughs> zone again here in TAC Cup Radio. Cottrell comes in. Good kick. Not a bad attempt, but he's just hooked it to the left. And a minor score. 12 12 84. The Dandenong Stingrays. They lead the Rebels 2 4 16 on the NG scoreboard as we approach 12 minutes on the Technica time clock in the third term. Ball brought back in by the Rebels. Now they've got a bit of clear space there. Good work by Lloyd. He kicks it out in the direction of Hill and Garn. Garn pushes him out the way. The ball beats all players. Over the boundary line, out of bounds. Half forward flank, city side of the ground. Ruckman set. Steve Cummings, Patrick Glanford. Glanford gets front position, taps down to advantage. Hill, Fletcher intercepts, and the ball will be thrown in again. 12-12 plays, 2-4, pardon me, 2-4. 68-point lead to the Dandenong Southern Stingrays, who will be heading to a preliminary final next Saturday here at Icon Park. Ball thrown in. Dandenong. Scrappy footy. 
caught high and the free kick will go to Finlay ba Finlay Bain. Got the hiccups. <laughs> Bain. Far back, I don't know why I find it so amusing. <laughs> Stingrays. Well, straighten things up towards centre half forward. Bowman had two to beat. Ball got brought to ground. Ranieri dished the handball off to Carlin off half back. Much better ball movement by the Rebels. Spots up right, who's been moved forward in this third term. The kick, a little poor inside 50. And coming took the mark. Went short with the kick to Garn, who switches wide. It was a high ball, opened Cleaver to come across, brought it to ground. The handball is skewed to Lloyd. Husswait coming through. Stingray's able to build off half back. They'll chip it short to Young. Sells a bit of candy to get around Lloyd. Hits up Cottrell. Dishes the handball off to McDonnell, who goes towards half forward. Great contested work from the Rebels. Brought the ball to ground. Cottrell seen over the boundary line and out of play. And that was Hellyer that came in there with the fist to bring the ball to ground. Much better from the Rebels in this third quarter. You wonder where that was in the first half because they're certainly a bit more desperate and a lot more intent. Ball comes to ground. Cleaver shadowing it, unable to take it. Ball still in play. Now it's over the line. Toby Marnie looking ready to come back on. Good news. Some positive news on both of the injuries this term for the Rebels. Lloyd back on the ground after copping a knock. In his rib region earlier in the term. Cleaver caught. Rebels somehow managed to get the kick away. Carlin, he's caught. Handball intercepted by Bedford. The umpires come in and said there's a free kick going the way of Carlin. Off half back. Just in front of the Carlton Gymnasium here at Icon Park. High ball, right, floating across, takes a nice grab. Centre wing broadcast side. Flicks it wide to Lloyd, who stops, props, assesses. Low kick down the long the line, no good. Frampton takes the mark. Chip in board, hits up Plumridge. Dishes the handball off to Fletcher, streaming through the middle of Princess Park. He goes towards the top of the 50 metre arc and hits up Zach Foot. Very good ball user by Foot, Zach Foot. Foot goes wide to Cottrell. Slightly worse of an angle, slightly closer to goal by about a metre and a half. Didn't feel confident in having the kick and Cottrell's had quite a few shots on goal for one goal for the day. And a difference in this third term inside defensive 50 for the Rebels. They're being, well, they're holding Dandenong to account at the moment. There's no space that's been auctioned off in this third term for the Stingrays after they had an acre of it, more than an acre in the opening half. A ball on the line, it was still in play. Now it's rushed through for Helia. 12 13 85, the Dandenong Stingrays. They lead. The GWV Rebels 12-4-2-4-16 turnover, snap on goal. It's across the face. I think that might have been Cottrell coming through there with the flying shot and another minor score. So that moves the Stingrays to 12-14-86 on the NG scoreboard. 2-4-16 the Rebels. 16 and a half gone on the Technica time clock. They send the back ball. They send the ball back. <laughs> they send the ball back whence it came. Now a quick kick at goal, and Bedford loves it. Toby Bedford, how many is that for him? That's his first. Toby Bedford gets his first, and the score is 13-14-92 on the NG scoreboard. 2-4-16, the Rebels, and we're 17 minutes in on the Technica time clock. Bedford getting a, a bit more involved this quarter. He's been pretty good, giving him a fair bit of run. Just quickly, that's Dandenong's 11th individual goal scorer. So that just shows how even they are across the board. And that's everyone's good. dangerous when they're wanting to attack. And most of their players are also very good defensively as well. Bowman gets the tap out to Fletcher. He gets a handball away. They work it backwards. 
to go forwards, but good gang tackling there by the Rebels. Not sure about the disposal there. Hill, he spits it out. Pile of players, top of the 50 metre arc, and the ball will be thrown in. Their forward line Fair just enough. hasn't functioned very well today, the Rebels. It hasn't been in there enough, and also when it has gone in there, it hasn't looked as dangerous as Dandenong's, clearly. Now, here's a snap, and that will go high, wide, and handsome. That was through Jaden Wright. Rick, was that Matty Lloyd disappearing down into the rooms then? I'll um, keep an eye on that one. He wasn't paying attention, <laughs> is what he was doing. I was watching the play. I think you were watching a race, Rick. <laughs> no, no. We've got our eyes on you up here. And like... My phone's gone. Kick by the Rebels. Close to the line, Mikel drew, and seeing it over the line was Matthew coming. Two very unheralded heroes for the Dandenong Stingrays are both Matthew and Stephen coming. They just get the job done every week. When we've called Dandenong, they're not always the highest possession getters, but they just do what they need to do, and they're both very good marks. Ball thrown in. Close to the Rebels' goals here. Oh, kick only went a short distance. Holding the ball. Husswaite. Gets the resultant free kick. He's in the harder defensive 50. Goes in short and finds Stenning. Stenning. Kicks to centre wing. Cottrell can't quite take it. Schnering. Ooh. Holding Rebels. And Lock Dawson will take the resultant free kick. Dawson. Told to play on, kicks to the flank, and <laughs> there's an executive maintenance mark of the day contender. Nice take there by Lachlan Young, one-hander. Rebels, uh, Stingrays <coughs> through Garn, kicks to centre wing, oh. Williams, strong, strong mark. He's got Steve coming, one out up forward, comes off the hands of coming. Good work there by the Rebels. They get it across to Lohman. Lohman kicks in the corridor. Oh, almost took it. Husswaite, he's good. They get it by hand. They go in short. Cottrell. Oh, laser-like. And the mark is taken here by Jake Frawley. How many shots have they had? from roughly this position on the ground, either end. Three quarters of what they've kicked. Huge, give yourself every opportunity to kick a goal. Keep having set shots from directly in front. Frawley comes in, kicks, and doesn't even bother the score. Couldn't, have even, couldn't miss that any further. They have certainly missed heaps of opportunities and that's what's scary considering how the scoreboard looks at the moment. I just don't think they're fully switched on. Braden Hellier goes cross goal. Long, long kick and lovely intercept mark for the Stingrays. Exact executive maintenance mark of the day. <laughs> Williams. Kicks to that 50, that spot inside forward 50. Young overrides it, overruns it. It's a long kick up forward. Clever work. Good work by Stenning. He kicks deep inside 50. Coming, comes through like a train. Doesn't take the footy. Now they're a chance to Stingrays all alone. Nice set of wheels on this young fella. Got the yellow boots. Lockie Stenning is a player I've liked all year, doesn't he? Um, you know, create a lot of play from oh, that yeah. back pocket area. And he's a beautiful kick. Lining up for his second goal, Lachlan McDonnell. Been good again today. Got the, got the yellow or gold boots suit the uniform. 
We're right behind him here. Glenn will have this lined up perfectly in the camera. And you can't get that any straighter. That is a beautiful goal. That's his second goal. That's his second. And Matthew, the score would be... 14, 14, 98. The Dandenong Stingrays leading the GWV Rebels 2, 4, 16 on the NG scoreboard. We're approaching the 23rd minute mark in the third quarter on the Technica time clock. Wheels will be happy to see you at three quarter time, Rick. Yeah, it's not a, not a bad time to, um, for me to visit, is it? <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Paul back in the middle. Stingrays have again worked their way to the top in this term. It hasn't been a dominant performance like the scoreboard suggests, but it's scary to think how many more gears they've got to come in this September final series as Wareham's taken over the boundary line and out of play. It'll be Dandenong's first shot at a TAC Cup Premiership. It's 28 scoring shots to six, if my mathematics is correct, plus a heap of that on the fulls from the Dandenong Stingrays. And as I said, they're not even going at 100%. Plumridge, unable to bring it in, will follow it up. Puts the handball into a bit of space, set up beautifully for Williams. He tried to get it over the top to Frawley. Thought he was taken high. The umpire says, no, we'll throw it in. If I was Bailey Williams, I would have had that shot myself, I think. Trying to be a bit too unselfish. He's going to take the rap contest. We'll go up against Meckle Drew. Williams won it down. Hugel Hagen, who's been moved into the defensive half of the ground in this third term for the GWV Rebels. As the siren sounds, the mark won't be paid to Finlay Bain. So that's three quarter time here at Icon Park. A dominant display from the Dandenong Stingrays. 14 14 98 to 2 4 16 on the NG scoreboard. A quarter where the Rebels dominated the first 10 minutes. Run over to get reward for effort. Goal kickers at three quarter time, Siobhan. Three goals to Ned Cahill for the Dandenong Sting Race, two to Lachlan McDonnell and singles to Matthew Cottrell, Bailey Williams, Campbell Husswait, Finlay Bain, Jake Frawley, Toby Bedford, Riley Bowman, Jai Taylor and Sam Fletcher. Eleven individual goal scorers and for the GWV Rebels, singles to Scott Carlin and Darcy McEldrew. We'll take a break here from Icon Park and on the other side of this will be the last quarter of the first elimination final followed by the Gippsland Power taking on the Geelong Falcons. This is Tech Cup Radio being streamed live through the TAC Cup website. Technica is an Australian company that's been importing Italian made and European designed cooking appliances and white goods for almost 20 years. Technica appliances are a fusion of cutting edge technology and contemporary design, providing a high level of style and sophistication to any kitchen. This is why so many leading architects, developers, interior designers and builders use Technica appliances because like their customers, they want the very latest in innovation and quality. Technica, proud sponsor of the Northern Knights and TAC Cup Radio. Executive Maintenance has grown to be a preferred facility maintenance provider by maintaining excellence for over 25 years. A registered domestic and commercial building practitioner, Executive Maintenance provides facility maintenance for government, corporate, property and retail sectors. Whether it's a handyman for your corporate space or a fully qualified crew to manage your project, Executive Maintenance has the knowledge and expertise to provide a personal yet professional service. If you need assistance with your building maintenance needs, email admin at executivemaintenance.com. .com.au. Executive Maintenance, a proud sponsor of TAC Cup Radio. Another year of TAC Cup football and your number one AFL draft site is back and bigger than ever. AdZ Media, powering AFL Draft Central, continues to revolutionise the way AFL draft content is reported. In 2018, the team has increased to more than 40 writers who will provide powerful and cutting-edge stories nationwide. With draft news, features and women's football coverage, AFL Draft Central is your one-stop shop for AFL draft content. Head to afldraftcentral.com.au or stay up to date with us on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. Check out at AFL Draft Central. 
Cowboys Cash and Carry have the largest range of clothing bargains in the northern suburbs for the whole family. School wear and work wear has just arrived and is half the price you'd expect to pay at major stores. A family run business, Cowboys Cash and Carry has new stock daily and 15,000 square feet of bargains. Come and see what the northern suburbs are raving about. Mention this ad and get 10% off their already cheap prices. Cowboys Cash and Carry, 169 Settlement Road, Thomastown, open seven days. Essendon and Captain Heppel settles and he's done it. He's slotted through the match winning goal. Roughhead flies high across the pack and takes a classic mark. Pendlebury's leading from the front, clocking up the possessions today, and young gun pup Cal Porter is looking good in his debut match. Gippsland Power generates footy legends, and NG is the power behind Gippsland Power. NG Hazelwood are proud to be helping tomorrow's future stars as major sponsor of Gippsland Power. Gippsland Power, the backyard playground of tomorrow's future stars. Go Power! Nixon Finance has been running in the Plenty Valley area of Greensboro for over 20 years. As your financial consultants and brokers, they specialise in all your equipment and vehicle finance needs. Home loans, business loans, commercial property loans. They deal with all the banks and get the right loan that suits your needs. Call Phil Smith during business hours on 9435 2600 or email nixonfinance at bigpond.com. On TACCup.com.au, this is TAC Cup Radio. Welcome back to Icon Park. We're at three-quarter time. It is 14-14-98. The Dandenong Stingrays leading the Rebels 2-4-16. And we are standing by for Rick Morris down on ground level with the Stingrays talent manager to have a chat from the three-quarter time huddle. Just obviously in the thicker things at the moment. So we'll... Uh, well, that was another by. dominant quarter by the uh, Danny Nong Stingrays. And they were able to hold the Rebels at bay, who came at them in the first 10 minutes. It was probably their best period of the game so far, where they held the ball inside their attacking 50, as we're ready to go now to Rick Morris down at ground level. Yeah, with Mark Wheeler of the Danny Nong Stingrays. Um, Good uh, position to be in, but um, what was the feeling around half time when you got the break on? Yeah, we're probably just sitting there and trying to say to the boys, stick, stick with our structures and continue to do with it. Start again, don't worry about the scoreboard at the first half. We start again and go quarter by quarter. Probably a little bit slow coming out of the gate, though we knew the pressure was going to come, but once we took that pressure and we started going again, we were happy with the second half of the third quarter. And you have maintained that pressure, but also the skill level around the ground? Yeah, we knew from the start of the year, we backed ourselves in February that we had a good kicking team and you know the wider space has helped us today. We've got good run and good kickers and, and yeah, as you said, we're, cont we're a contested side so we like that contested ball as well. And they did come at you a bit in that uh, early in that third quarter and started to take a few risks, the Rebels, uh, but you countered that pretty easily? Yeah, they, like the back line stood up pretty tall and you know all the unsung heroes do their role and play their role. So we knew they'd come. They're a good quality team. They shouldn't be... They're in here playing finals and we know they're a good team. So we're just... You know, we don't take it too easy. Don't take the foot off. We want to finish the game off and start again for the last quarter. And uh, how do your coaches challenge your players in a situation where it's 98 to 16 at three quarter time? How do you keep them motivated uh, to stop thinking about next week? Uh, we don't show them the scoreboard, mate. You blokes put it up there. We just try to say quarter by quarter. But, you know, to be honest, they, they actually, they, you know, put themselves up each week and they, they've got their own motivation, mate. They don't really worry about the scoreboard. You can see when they kick a goal, they get around each other. If they do a big tackle, they get around each other. So that's how they do it, mate. They don't worry about the scoreboard. They worry about the one percenters. I did notice that in the huddle with the, the midfield group. There was quite a few in there. Uh, but uh, Campbell Husway led that group, but they all chipped in and had their say. Yeah, they do, mate. Everyone's got a role. We've got 23 players out there, and they all play their role, and that's how we know we're going to keep winning. Well done, Mark. Thanks for um, taking the time out, and good luck for the rest of the game. Thank you, mate. Rick Morris down at ground level with the talent manager of the Dandenong Stingrays, Mark Wheeler. They'll go through to the preliminary final, which is back here on Saturday next week here at Icon Park. That match to be streamed live here on TAC Cup Radio through the TAC Cup .com.au website and they will play Siobhan. 
They will play either the Sandringham Dragons or the Murray Bush Rangers with that game to be played tomorrow on tackup.com.au live streamed. And that will be another great game, but I'm sure either Sandringham or Murray, if they're watching this game today, would be thinking, how is it possible that we can break them down because they just seem to have consistent winners on all lines and it's not just the same players that bob up every week they have such consistency across the team that it's quite hard to stop their ball movement when it's so quick and precise pretty tough assignment for whoever gets a Danny Nong stingrays because as they've shown again today they are a tall side, but they've got agile players, plenty of smalls that can do a lot of damage. And as I mentioned before, they're just, it's hard to break down a team that has quick and precise ball movement as they do. They've just got all bases covered, don't they, Rick? They've got players in the right position right across the ground. It's a good experience to get down at ground level and watch them play because they just uh, run to the right places. They um, have someone uh, just through like a training drill uh, each time, especially across half-back, to flick back that handball to, to get them running straight. There's the uh, chocolate bullets are being raided here in the commentary box by the cameraman. <laughs> Might not get an opportunity to get any back there, Crooksy. That's fine. We've got to look after these guys. They're doing a good job. Uh, round the grounds uh, at the VFL, Richmond 3-1 are leading the Bombers 2-3. That is uh, four minutes into the second quarter. That doesn't mean much, does it, Crooksy? Uh, we <laughs> want to win help. everything we play. <laughs> Very big match, uh, uh, Rick. I have an interest in it until we don't win. <laughs> <laughs> Drop off it pretty quick. All right, last quarter action here. Take it away, Maddo. Williams won the tap down and then fired out his own handball to Fletcher, who goes long inside 50. Ball off hands, Stingrays working overtime still. Huss weight, kick around the body. Rolls through for a minor score to get us underway in this final term. 14 15 99 for Dandenong Stingrays. To 2 4 16. The Rebels on the NG scoreboard. Huss weight comes across, takes the mark, pokes the kick to the top of the goal square, where the mark is taken by Toby Bedford. A little too easy again there for the Dandenong Stingrays. Way too easy. And Rick asked uh, Mark Wheeler just before how he keeps his players motivated and they have no issue. They just love kicking goals and they're, they're a dominant side. Might have an issue with that scoring attempt there from Bedford who from the top of the goal square put it through for a minor score. Bit of goal kicking practice coming the way of the Stingrays during the week, I'd suggest, as Lohman takes the mark. Defensive side of the outer wing for the Rebels. Gives the handball off. And they move it towards half forward. Hill was trying to come from behind. Standing in his way, though, was Garn. Half back for the Dandenong Stingrays. Pokes it into the middle where Fletcher takes the mark. He'll go wide with a kick. Taylor, just done this all game, controlled it, possessed it and hit up targets and they'll do that again as Bowman takes the mark at half forward out of side. The big man assesses his options, decides he'll go long inside 50, outstretched there was coming and he took it just a centimetre in from the boundary line. Forward pocket, city side of Icon Park. Notice he ignored Bedford then. He's After that last shot. <laughs> <laughs> I think anyone would. And with a kick like that, I oh, think you're entitled to, Rick. Goodness. That is the AFL Draft Central goal of the day. Cumming, Stephen Cumming gets his first. Our first of the last term moves the Stingrays to 15, 16, 106. To 2 4 16 on the NG scoreboard. Two and a half minutes gone on the Technica time clock in the final term. Rick, their kicks all day have been incredibly well weighted and incredibly accurate. Oh, no doubt. They're just a skilled unit. And I was just thinking to myself um, if you played for Danny Young, it's hard to stand out because they've just got winners all around the ground. Got a great back line, they've got good sentiment, uh, good forwards. So, um, 
It's just an amazing unit. It's one of the best tack up sides I've seen. Fletcher pinged for holding the footy. Rebels will move it to half forward where Wilson takes the mark. Pokes it into the pocket, searching for Hill. Had a punch from behind from Garn. And the Stingrays will move it off half back once more. Bain got bumped after he kicked it, which means there'll be a downfield free kick going the way of the Stingrays. Coming, pops it up. Rebels front spot. Crumb the ball and they get it across to Marnie, who tried to get it to Wareham, but ball over the boundary line and out of play. When I think of the Dandenong Stingrays, one word comes into my mind and it's ruthless. They just do not let the opposition back in the game and they continue, as we're seeing right now, with the stranglehold. They have no issue with motivation at all. As it was a shallow throw in, the umpire says we'll do that again. Four minutes in on the Technica time clock into this final term. Of course, we've got Gippsland and Geelong following this game at Icon Park and it will also be live streamed through tackup.com.au as it's all wrapped up on the half forward line for the Dandenong Stingrays broadcast side. 15 16 106 Dandenong leading the Rebels 2 4 16. There are two goals the Rebels coming in the second term of the game as. Lohman's kick to the centre wing is going to be cut off. Mark taken by Matthew Garn. Centres the ball. McDonald took the mark. Wanted to move it quickly. Did so. Taylor took it. Dishes the handball off to a running Young. Long ball inside 50 from Young. Just to the left hand side. How many behinds is that now, Matt? 17. Gee. 15, 17, 107. I mentioned before they've been accurate with their kicking apart from anything directed towards the scoreboard. Field kicking's been excellent, but shots on goal will certainly be a uh, focus at training this week. Having said that, contradicting myself left, right and centre here, they've kicked 15 goals as well. Ball to the broadcast side. <coughs> Mark taken by Marnie. Handballs it off to Lloyd, a little more inboard, and he flicks it wide to Hill in a contest. Had the ball knocked out of his hands, and the umpire says, give it to me, I'll ball it up. Ruckman nominate. It'll be Williams and Watts. Schneering tried to get the handball to Hill, coming through Plumridge. Caught, dispossessed. Umpire says, nothing doing, I will ball it up. Centre wing broadcast side here at Icon Park. There's a little bit of cloud cover comes over the top of us. Nothing to be too concerned about though. Williams gives the handball off. Cahill was under a bit of pressure. Coming at half forward, couldn't claim it. Eugle Hagen managed to get a, geez, a chaos footy at half back for the Rebels and Martin's eventually able to get it into some space. Wright shrugs the tackle off in the middle of Icon Park. Puts the handball to Carlin who's dragged down by Plumridge. Advantage called from the umpire. Andenong didn't realise it until the very last moment. They overcooked the kick. No advantage there. Polkinghorn puts it into a bit of space out of side for the Rebels who turn it over. Foot puts it to the top of the goal square. It's a vacant goal square bouncing on the last line. Wareham was able to get a fingertip to it. And it was a minor score. 15 18 108. The Stingrays leading the Rebels 2 4 16 on the NG scoreboard. The kick to Schnering short under immediate pressure. It's one on three. Help finally arrives. Wareham does a dance to get around traffic. Craig Peters off half back. A short kick to Carlin. Has a player well wide which is the direction he goes. Martin takes the mark out of sight, pops the handball over to the top. Ranieri streaming down the outer wing, puts it towards half uh, forward. Cut off though by Young for the Stingrays who comes in board, juggling it, Williams. Acre of space for him. Puts it towards foot at half forward. Off hands, Rebels. It's a bit ping pong football at the moment. 
Young following it up. Goes wide with the kick and Frawley takes the mark. Centre wing out of side. His kick down the line is scored by Hellyer over the boundary line and out of play, Siobhan. Yeah, the Stingrays, what can you say? They're too good. They're way too good. The Rebels looked a few times there to started to get a good passage of play going and their kick inside 50s let them down and there's always a Stingrays player there playing as a loose to mark the footy and then repel an attack for the Stingrays. Williams and Glanford, the two number 29s, went into battle for the ruck contest. Glanford got the handball across to Dawson who got it back and then fed it by hand. The kick was poor in the end though from Polkinghorn over the boundary line and out of play. Rick going to be incredibly hard to judge the Nixon Finance Player of the Day today. Yeah, there's winners all around the ground, isn't there, for Dandy Nong. Um, yeah, it's, whether you go tall or, um, or the midfielders, there's been a lot of good players out there for them. Glanford this time worked his way to the front. Williams though doing the roving work. Kick went inside 50 for the Rebels. There's a push and a free kick will go their way. Charlie Wilson. Haven't who, seen much of him today. No. And he was also a player named in the TAC Cup Team of the Year last Sunday night on the interchange bench. Coach Mark Gregg decided to play him in the midfield for predominantly most of the day. So uh, it's his first opportunity for a shot on goal from a set shot. Looking for their first major in the second half. Wilson comes in and goals. So the Rebels move to 3-4-22. Richie on the NG scoreboard. Dandenong 15-18-108 as we tick towards 10 minutes in the final term on the Technica time clock. I've picked that up, Matthew. Well done. <laughs> very quick. I was very good in first slip. <laughs> All right, back in the middle. Not as good as the cover drives from Rick that's come up a couple of times no, throughout the year. Him. <laughs> he'll, be, he'll be finished about the quarter time in the next game. <laughs> Carlin for the Rebels. Good hands, gets it out to Mahoney. Kicks to half forward. Stingrays. It's always an interesting time like for a top team. You're getting into this last quarter. You've got to have a bit of self-interest about, you know. Okay, we're two we're two weeks, two games from a a grand final. You don't want to be doing anything silly or whatever. Lowman umpire looks and says holding the ball. And well, they play on straight away. The Stingrays they're off to the races. They get it over to Bowman by hand. Good pace. They're looking for Williams on a long, long lead. Nice little chip in work and Kale goes in short and finds Finley Bain. That was good work on by Luca Goonan. Ned Kale using all of those minutes. Uh Coming back on. Is anyone tallying these minutes, Rick? Um, <laughs> I think it's the actual game time, isn't it? Okay. Oh, all up a, a half in terms of minutes. Oh, I see what you mean here. So he's had a, been a few rotations. Finley Bain. Lining up for his second goal of the day. Looks pretty good off the boot to me. That's another one. Bain moves. Uh, that's his... Second goal. Second goal, and it moves Danny Nong on to 16, 18, 114. The Stingrays are edging closer to that triple figured margin. 3 4 22. The GWV Rebels. One of the most impressive parts of the Danny Nong Stingrays is they certainly know how to kick a winning score. I think they've kicked. 100 points and more a couple of times during the home and away season and like I said before they've got 12 individual goal kickers up on the board. Long ball to the top of the 50 here's Kale again oh, great evasive work to put it inside 50 Lloyd brought the ball to ground for the Rebels and then the tackle laid on by Marnie will get a ball up 
Back inside attacking 50 for the Stingrays. You'd be quaking in your boots if you were Murray Bush Rangers or Sandringham as the flying shot on goal from Goonan. Just goes to the left-hand side. 16-19, 115 now. The Stingrays, Lloyd takes the mark back pocket. Long with the kick, Carl on direction, punched out of his hands, Cottrell front and centre, dished the handball off to Hamill, high ball inside 50. Husswaite did well to bring the ball to ground, Cahill gets it over the top and I think that's McDonnell that's put it through. Third goal for Lachlan McDonnell and how was that handball? He knew he had a player free in the goal square and that look away handball over the top of his body was just absolutely magnificent. Again, Dandenong Stingrays, they play as a team. They know where each other are. They've got this extraordinary synergy. It reminds me a lot of how the Richmond Football Club are playing at the moment where they, they're forward handball and they run in waves. It's fantastic to watch. They've got yellow and black on their jumper. <laughs> Is that an ominous sign? As we march towards that final day in September, Lloyd flicks the ball wide for the Rebels. And he'll receive the handball back. Centre wing. Kick. Not great. Out on the full. Stingrays to get the free kick. Defensive side of the outer wing. And they'll work their way inboard. Good contest from Jed Hill. He's kept trying throughout the day for the Rebels. Been one of their best. Schnering. Lobs it towards half forward. Just floating across though was Frampton to take the mark. Kicks into the middle, Eugen Hagel, intercept mark. Has a look around, decides to go laterally. Hits up Matty Lloyd. He goes in short, Dawson, back to Lloyd. Nice, nice bit of evasion. Step. Kicks inside, 50, almost a mark taken there by Jaden Wright. <coughs> Kicks across. Bain, brought down in the tackle, dispossessed, holding the ball. Wonderful tackle. <coughs> Rebels, got a man loose on 50. Handballs across. This is Wareham, goes in short. And we've got a set shot on goal. This will be Charlie Wilson. He's very dangerous when he goes inside the forward line. There's no wonder he was named on the interchange bench in the TAC Cup team of the year. He's very dangerous in, in the forward line. Good option for them to kick to. Notoriously tough spot to kick goals from in TAC Cup, Rick, over the years. Yeah, it has been. We don't see a lot, but uh, if anyone could do it, it's this guy. Charlie Wilson comes in. It's a bit skew if through for a behind. Three goals, five, 23 to the GWV Rebels. 17 goals. I'll wait for that man to get in front of the scoreboard. 19, 121, Crooksy. That's the one. Time check? Uh, 16 minutes into the final term on the Technica time clock. Eugen Hagel. He's the one to put in your black book. Eugen <laughs> Hagel over the next couple of years. 16 years of age. Back to him. Classy left footer straight away. Kicks to centre half forward. Got some nice numbers here. Ball, handball backwards to Lloyd to go forwards. Hill, didn't really, not too interested in the contest there, Jed Hill. They kick in the middle. Husswaite is in the middle of Icon Park. He goes wide, he spots up McDonnell, gets the handball onto foot. He can't quite take it cleanly. It's a bit of a chaos footy. Oh. Stingrays. They're not that clean either. And the ball in the heart of defensive 50 is squeezed out by the Rebels into the middle of the ground. Play on, says the umpire. I thought they both marked it. They both marked it by the look of it. I'd pay that to either Denny Nong Stingray's player there. Should have just been the man in front. 
Even if he's your own man. <laughs> Tapped out. Kick around the Johnny Horner. Mark taking a centre half back. By Garn. Matty Garn goes in. Hits up Hayden Young. Inside the centre square. Young. Back to Garn. They go out wide. Cottrell taps it over the top. Good work to Plumridge. Husswait on half forward. Gets it into Frawley. Frawley into Young. Young. Beautiful spot up and mark taken by William Hamill. Nice lead. Not a lot of space on the lead either. Had to be precise with the kick and he hit up the target perfectly. Will Hamill to become the Daniel Stingray's 13th individual goal scorer if he nails this one? I reckon he'll nail it, Siobhan. He's got a feeling. Pressure's off. Hamill comes in. Kicks. A behind. The commentator's curse comes out again. Barry Crocker. <laughs> Cameraman called it too. <laughs> Just around the grounds, half time at Northport Oval. Essendon 5-4-34, Richmond 4-3-27. Hugel Hagen takes a great mark on the defensive line for the Rebels. Puts it towards the wing, was searching there for right, couldn't take the mark. Carlin there to mop up, pops the ball in board. Schneering. Down the line, right, juggling it, takes the mark, plays on, runs to 50, high ball, top of the goal, square Rebels. Had a player, did he get a shove? No, said the umpire. Ball bobbling in the forward pocket out of side. Stays in. Grant, too cute with the kick. Wilson mopping up, snap from Wilson to the left-hand side. He's an exciting player, though, Charlie Wilson. When he is in that forward line, you just feel like every time the ball's near him, something magical may happen. So certainly one to look out for. As Fletcher takes the mark for the Stingrays, he goes wide with the kick where Jed Hill takes the mark for the Rebels. One thing to remember with this Rebels side, it was the beneficiary of the wild card round last week. They didn't finish inside the top eight, but got a finals berth courtesy of that. And they are a very young list, which means promising signs for 2019. Lloyd works it to Lohman by hand, inside 50. Cottrell standing his ground, takes the mark. Kicks it short to Huss, wait at centre-half back. Pops the ball wide, Young gives the handball off. His streaming teammate puts it inside 50. We're mopping up. Low ball in the Martin direction. Couldn't claim it. Desperate stuff from Frampton, who's locked it in. And the umpire said, you dragged it in quite, and didn't um, get rid of it. I quite like that decision. He didn't uh, try to move it on. Been very consistent with that all day, Rick. Mm. I think that was a fair call. Martin on half back. He's going to retreat a long way to wear him in the back pocket. And they'll try to switch to Lloyd. They've done that on a couple of occasions today, the Rebels. Just retreat defensively, switch the ball. That time it doesn't work out. Dribbles over the line in front of Hellyer. And the ball will be thrown in on the half-forward flank. City side of Icon Park. 21 gone in the final term on the Technica time clock. 17 20, 122. The Stingrays they lead by 98 points on the NG scoreboard. Can they get it to triple figures with a kick like that to Cahill? They might. This is going to be his fourth goal if he kicks this one. And he's only played a half, as Rick mentioned before. So I think we might be seeing him in the preliminary final against either Murray or Sandringham next week. And if he's not in the side, and I'm going down to Shipley Oval to commence a protest because <laughs> he has been phenomenal up forward today. For Four goals in a half of footy is quite an extraordinary effort. But also his other areas around the ground. He's put it through. 
18, 20, 128, the Dandenong Stingrays. They lead the GWV Rebels 3, 6, 24 on the NG scoreboard. 22 gone in the final term on the Technica time clock. I rewind back 12 months ago. Our first elimination final on that occasion out of Victoria Park was a big game, a big uh, win to the Oakley Chargers over the Northern Knights. The second game was an absolute cracker between the Stingrays and the Eastern Rangers with the Stingrays coming from behind that day. So hopefully we'll get a, a competitive game in the, the second one if you can read anything off that. Is that the game where Luke Davies Uniac put the team on his back? Something like that as it <laughs> goes inside 50. Kale again involved, a handball over the top to Goonan. Amazing, absolutely amazing. They are a very, very well drilled unit, the Dandenong Stingrays. They move to 1920, 134, a 110 point lead over the GWV Rebels 3624 on the NG scoreboard. That's Luca Gunan's first goal of the day and moves them onto 13 individual goal scorers with one player kicking four and another kicking three. Put it into perspective, nine scoring shots to 39. <laughs> oh my goodness. Plus, off the top of my head, three or four out on the fulls. Yep. Very impressive performance. Carlin by hand. Stingrays caused the intercept. Frawley, his kick was intercepted. Now the Rebels. Long ball from Schnering. As the siren sounds to conclude the elimination final. The Rebels season is done and dusted. The Stingrays, the minor premiers of the TAC Cup in 2018, advance to the preliminary final and they will wait for tomorrow's result from the Murray Bush Rangers and Sandringham Dragons game to find out who they played. 19-21-34, the Stingrays defeating the Rebels, 3-6-24 on the NG scoreboard. Our goal kickers, Siobhan. For the Dandenong Stingrays, four goals to Ned Cahill, three goals to Lachlan McDonnell, and two goals to Finlay Bain, all singles to Sam Fletcher, Jai Taylor,